Hi, everybody, and welcome to Memorial Stadium in Baltimore for game number two of this young NFL season as the Cincinnati Bengals take on the Baltimore Colts. This is one of two games today that matches playoff teams from last year. These two made it. The other game is the Rams and the Vikings. Both were opening day winners, the Colts over the New England Patriots, and the Bengals knocked off the Denver Broncos 17-7. This game matches up two of the best quarterbacks in the National Football League, Kenny Anderson and Burt Jones. Jones is in his fourth year, Anderson, of course, starting his sixth. Stan Fritz and Archie Griffin will be the Bengals running backs once again this afternoon. Their counterparts will be Roosevelt Leakes and Lydell Mitchell, the former teammate of Franco Harris at Penn State, going for the Baltimore Colts. This is by far the finest afternoon we've ever had for a game here in Baltimore. It's 81 degrees, and it's a shirt sleeve sun-baked crowd here in Memorial Stadium. We just had the introduction of the Cincinnati Bengals defensive unit, and I might say there'll be plenty of noise this afternoon. Every football fan is well aware of the problem they've had here in Baltimore. A resignation six days before the season opened of coach Ted Marchabrota in an air player revolt led by quarterback Burt Jones, which along with other things prompted Marchabrota to come back. Well, they wiped that away last week and went on to beat New England and get into the swing of this NFL season. I'll be back with the starting lineup after this message. Hi, Marathon Man. Hi, Judy. How are you and your favorite car doing? As a matter of fact, today's my car's birthday, and I'd like to, you know, do something nice for it. Well, I got just the thing. There's no better car gift than an oil change. Drain out that old stuff and fill the crankcase with Marathon Superior All Season. Here, read for yourself. High viscosity index offers easy starting characteristics of an SAE 10W. Wow! Is that good? <laughs> That's great. Means that with Superior, the engine starts easy in winter, yet that oil has body for hot weather driving. And that other business there about detergent dispersant additives means your car's engine's protected against dirt and rust and sludge. Really, Superior is one of the nicest things you can do for your car, even between birthdays. Keeps the engine clean, it cuts down engine wear, keeps the PCV valves clean. It When does that start to happen? Well, give us 15 minutes. Change away. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go pick out a card. <laughs> We've had the introduction of the Bengals' defensive unit, the Colts' offensive unit, but of course the toss of the coin is still to take place. On offense, the Colts will have Burt Jones at quarterback, Roosevelt Leakes and Lydell Mitchell will be his running backs, Glenn Dowdy and Roger Carr will be the wide receivers, and Raymond Chester will be the tight end. They have David Taylor and George Coons are the tackles, Robert Pratt and Elmer Collette are the guards, Ken Mendenhall is the center. The Bengals on offense, Kenny Anderson the quarterback, Stan Fritz and Archie Griffin are the running backs, Bill Brooks and Ike Curtis will be the wide receivers with Bob Trumpy at tight end. Rufus Mays and Vern Holland will be the tackles. Shinners and Boosnock will alternate at guards. Dave Lapham is the right guard, and Bob Johnson is the center. Now, we'll have today's kickoff in just a moment. You know what I could really go for right now, Barbara? What? Pizza. Let's run up to Gaspini's Pizza Palace. But honey, I want to see this movie. It starts in ten minutes. Oh, yeah. I want to see that, too. Hey, why don't you pick up a frozen pizza at Convenience? We can watch the movie while it cooks. Yeah, that'll be cheaper than gas panties, too. At Convenience Food Mart, you can get what you want quick and easy. We really can make life a little more convenient. Mm -hmm. We make life a little more convenient. Oh. For your insurance needs, see an independent insurance agent of Henderson. The independent insurance agents of Henderson, Kentucky, take pride in caring about the needs of the community. Call a member agency for your insurance. Members are E.J. Mabry Insurance, Collier and Lackey, Atkinson Stanley, Star Thompson and Bird, Causey Springer, Hunt Dixon, and Royster and Lambert. They're the independent insurance agents of Henderson. They'll be glad to serve you.
Eastern time zone got underway about an hour ago. This is the only 2 o'clock starter because of the blue law here in Baltimore, which they've tried to repeal numerous times but have never been able to do so. So in the game's already underway at Pittsburgh, in the second quarter, the Cleveland Browns lead the Pittsburgh Steelers 7 to nothing. Houston and Buffalo are scoreless in the second period. The San Diego Chargers lead Tampa Bay 3 to nothing in the first quarter. At Detroit, Atlanta leads the Detroit Lions 7 to nothing. in the second quarter, and it's Washington 10, Seattle nothing in the second period. An update, uh, Houston leading uh, Buffalo 3-0 in the second quarter, and the Philadelphia Eagles now lead the New York Giants 7-0 in the second period. This broadcast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Cincinnati Bengals solely for the entertainment of our listening audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the special written consent of the Cincinnati Bengals is prohibited. The announcers in this broadcast are employed by WLW Radio Incorporated with the approval of the Cincinnati Bengals Incorporated. The Bengals won the toss and have elected to receive. The Bengals will be going right to left on your radio dial and as we look at it here at Memorial Stadium. The Bengals dressed in their white uniforms this afternoon. The Colts with their blue jerseys and white pants. Tony Linhart will do the kicking off and Willie Shelby and Lenville Elliott are the two deep men for the Bengals. They were expecting a crowd of about 50,000 in Memorial Stadium, and that's just about what we'll have, and they'll be a noisy crew. You remember the last time the Bengals played here, there was about an 8, 9, 10-minute delay at one point of the game because of the booing of the crowd. And you, perhaps you can hear the crescendo of noise beginning to swell in the background as they signal for Tony Linhart to advance. There's the kick, and the game is underway. It's a good boost, and Shelby takes a yard deep in the end zone. Comes out to the 10, to the 15, hit at the 20 still on his feet and gets away to about the 28-yard line before he's dragged down on the far side of the field over there by Howard Stevens, the little guy who returns the punt and the kickoff, was the man who was in on the stop on the far side. So the Bengals will start out at their own 28-yard line, and it'll be first and 10. Defensively, Fred Cook and John Dutton are at ends for Baltimore with Mike Barnes and Joe Ehrman at the tackle. Jim Shionsky is the middle linebacker, Daryl Luce and Stan White on the outside. So Brooks and Curtis come to the left side. And now Curtis goes in motion to the far side of the field. We go into the first play, Anderson back to throw. Look, gets away, now he's coming up, still on his feet to the 30, gets to the 35, to the 40-yard line, to the 45, will be hit and going down at the 46-yard line. He spread him out deep, and Anderson came straight up the middle, and Nelson Muncy, the cornerback on that side, finally had to drag him down. Anderson looked downfield, everybody was covered, and then came up the middle, and Kenny, who has good speed, made it all the way up to the 46 for an 18-yard run on the first play from Strimmy. That last five yards he picked up, he used one of his blockers very effectively. He could have been hit back at around the 40-yard line, but he used one of his downfield men very effectively, cut to the outside, and then finally fell just before he was hit at the 46. So now they're tight with Curtis out to the left side. Fritz and Griffin are split in behind Anderson. Colt six men up, a quick pitch. Around the outside is Griffin. Not going to get much, maybe a yard, and that's all. And a far side of the field as he's pulled down. Darrell Luce, the linebacker over on that side, in on the stop. Lloyd Mumford and Nelson Muncy are the cornerbacks with Jackie Wallace and Bruce Lair at the safeties. There's going to be gain of just a couple of feet on the play, and that's all. We'll call it no gain at all. It'll be a second and ten. This front four of Baltimore led the NFL in sacks last year with 59. And they've become a well-known group. Curtis goes far side, Brooks near side, second and 10. Bengals at their own 46. The cornerback's about seven yards off the line of scrimmage. Anderson back to throw. Still looking, fires down the middle. Curtis, did he hold on to it? He did, he bobbled it, but then held it as he was hit and going down by Lloyd Mumford at the Baltimore 45-yard line. Curtis had done a curl down there, and Anderson really drilled the ball to him. It popped up in the air, but as Curtis was falling with those great hands of his, he managed to hold on to it. And it's going to be very close to a 10-yard gain. From the Bengals 46 to the 44 and a half yard line of Baltimore, it'll be third down and about a half a yard to go. And Tony Davis goes in now to replace Archie Griffin on this third and short yardage situation. The Colts jam up shoulder to shoulder. The Bengals with third and perhaps a foot and a half to go for the first down. Into the middle of the line and getting the first down. Plunging all the way down to the 36-yard line goes Stan Fritz. Big hole opened up in the middle by Bob Johnson along with Dave Lappin. And the other guard, Shinners or Bouznak, it was 
Bujnak at that particular time. And in short yardage, they made themselves about eight yards down to the Colts' 36. The Colts have won 10 straight regular season games. Their last loss was in October of last year to New England, 21 to 10. So the Bengals at the Colts call at 37. The rear of the football right there. The slot formation left with Brooks wide, Curtis in the slot. Colts jump around on defense. Hand off is Fritz plunging his way into the right side. Santa's got good yardage on that off tackle slant right down to the 30 before Dutton and Herman can combine to bring him down along with Stan White, the linebacker. But Fritz got the ball all the way down to the 30. A seven yard gainer and it'll be second and three. This is a tall front four of the Colts. Cook is 6'4", Barnes 6'6", Herman 6'4", and Dutton at right end is the big guy. He's 6'7". So the back's in an eye behind Anderson now. The Bengals moving the ball. Hand off to the second man, Griffin. And Archie hits the stone wall as he hits the 29. Tried to sneak in over right guard. Lloyd Mumford, the cornerback, came up quickly to administer a pretty good hit. Also down the bottom of the stack is Dutton. And Herman were both there also. There is no gain to amount to in the play. And it'll be third and three right at the 30. Two weeks ago, Herman got his clock cleaned pretty well. Got a slight concussion in a preseason game against Detroit and was actually knocked unconscious. Played part of the game last week, has no recollection of it. So it's third and three, a little long to run, and the Colts will be looking past. Anderson back to throw, fires out in the flat. It's caught and dragged down at the 25-yard line as he goes out of bounds is Billy Brooks. Right on him was Nelson Munsey. But Brooks got the quick out for the first down. It'll be right about at the 25-yard line, just shy of the 25. And needing three, the Bengals got themselves about four and a half and have the first down to keep the drive alive and going. And Kenny Anderson now is two out of two for nine yards. It was here two years ago that Anderson hit 16 in a row to set an NFL mark. And later was broken by Burt Jones, who was his counterpart this afternoon. Brooks near side, Curtis far side, backs in an eye behind Anderson. The Bengals down near the Colts 20. Big draw, back to throw as Anderson fires out in the flat, a dive, but Fritz can't hold on to it, down to the 20-yard line. A pass was a little bit low as Fritz was turning around. Brooks had gone down deep on the near side. Trumpy had gone down deep on the far side. Curtis had hooked and come back, and he threw it to Fritz out in the left flat. But down to the 20, the pass a little bit low, and Fritz dropped it. So it'll come back to the 25, and it'll be second and 10. Kenny Anderson, a remarkably cool individual when he drops back, whether he's in the pocket or has to step out of the pocket. Remarkably cool, takes time in picking out his receivers. He is averaging only one interception in every 33 attempts. That's uh, a great, great ratio. So we're ready to go. Again, the Colts have everybody up close. Anderson back to throw, has time. Lux fires on the flat. It's Some Chevette owners talk about their favorite car. Here's what Mrs. Carol Hazelwood had to say about Chevette's roominess. We're a very tall family, and we wanted a small car. We tried many cars, including Rabbit, and we couldn't fit in. I'm 6'2", and my husband is 6'5". Chevette's rear seat back folds down to give you 26 cubic feet of carrying space. Mr. Kevin Nichols said, It's bigger in size than I thought it would be. It's everything I thought it would be. For Chevette Economy, Miss Jane Saito. I was looking for a car that would save me gas, and that's why I chose the Chevette. 40 miles per gallon EPA highway estimate, 28 miles per gallon city, with standard 1.4 liter engine, 4 speed manual transmission, and 3.70 axle ratio. Actual mileage may vary. And to wrap things up for Chevette, Mr. Raymond Andrews. Groomy? Good gas mileage. Not a rough ride for a small car. It's all right. Chevette by Chevrolet. It could make you a happy owner, too. Wouldn't you know, just as we're talking about Kenny Anderson averaging only one interception every 33 attempts, that's when Lloyd Mumford comes up and makes that interception. Second period score, the New England Patriots leading the Miami Dolphins 6 to nothing, And in the second quarter, the Washington Redskins 17, Seattle nothing. The Colts come right out of double wing formation with only leaks in behind Burt Jones. Jones fakes and goes back to throw. Fires out in the flat, it was caught at the 42-yard line. Pritchard was right on the receiver. It was grabbed out there by Lydell Mitchell. Mitchell came out of the backfield off that wing formation. 
This one right off on the left flat. And Jones drilled it hard. It's going to be out at the 43. Pritchard is right there with him. It's a five-yard gain, and it will be second and five. Offensively, David Taylor and George Coons are the tackles. Robert Pratt and Elmer Collett, the guards. Ken Mendenhall, the center. Lydell Mitchell and Roosevelt Leakes now in a split behind Burt Jones. Has both Carr and Dowdy wide. Second and five. A handoff into the right side, wiggling his way forward for maybe a yard or two, and that's about all is Mitchell. Jim LeClaire, the middle linebacker, got the telling shot on him, dropped him at the 46. It's a gain of about three yards on the play, and it'll bring up a third and two for the Colts. You think Mitchell wasn't a busy man last year in the Colts scheme of things, carried 289 times for 1,193 yards. First time a Colt runner had ever gone over the 1,000-yard mark. He also had 60 pass receptions for 544 yards, total of 15 touchdowns rushing and passing. Extremely busy. Third and two, and McCauley goes in for Mitchell. And off into the right side, fighting his way through Roosevelt Leakes, and I believe he has the first down as he got to about the 49-yard line. He was squirming along. He did make it at the 49. They generally substitute McCauley on third down for either Lydell Mitchell or Roosevelt Leakes, and that time he got the job done. He also went with the two tight ends. He got about three in a play. Bo Harris was the stopper on the play, but out at the Colts' own 49-yard line, they have their first first down of the afternoon. The Bengals were moving in case you just joined us, only to have Mumford intercept the pass and bring it back out to the Colts' 38. Now they split wide men on both sides. Burt Jones back to throw. Didn't complete. He overthrew Roger Taylor on the quick out. Or Roger Carr. Over in the left flat. Kenny Riley was over there covering, but as Carr did his quick out, the ball was already zinging on by his ear, so it is second and ten. Thus far, Taylor has gone only to the quick out pattern. Burt Jones doing the throwing. It's the 49 now. It'll be second and 10. Before the game got underway, about two hours before the game got underway, Jones was standing out on the field throwing some passes, talking with Tommy Casanova and Lamar Parrish. Certain camaraderie between these fellows off the field or before the game that doesn't exist now. Jones makes the handoff. Back to throw. Fires out in the flat. Bo Harris after him drags him down. But it looks as though he might get around at the Bengals' 42-yard line. Lydell Mitchell is the man who came out of the backfield to get that ball, and he has got that great speed. But out in the right flat, Bo Harris was over there with him and hauled him down at the Bengals' 43. But it is a gain on a play of about eight yards, and they'll bring up a third and two. They like to throw to Mitchell. He can run inside. He can run outside. And now we're down on the skin part of the infield. They're tight on the left side. Bring a wide receiver out to the right side. The back's in an eye behind Burt Jones. Jones on a quick pitch around to the right side. Getting the first down inside the 40 to about the 38-yard line. The Bengals are signaling her was a fumble, and her was, and the Bengals have recovered it. Bo Harris is the man down at the bottom of the stack. Howard Stevens has come in the ball game and is carrying that on that sweep around to the right. So now the Bengals have taken over, and there's time out on the field. Score, Bengals nothing, Colts nothing service. That's a good reason to bank at a Seabury Deposit Bank. And here are just a few of the services they have to offer. Check credit for those times when the bargain that won't wait for the budget. It's a combination of your Seabury Deposit Bank checking account and Master Charge. Simply write a check and the Seabury Deposit Bank will transfer Master Charge funds up to your Master Charge limit to cover it. It's like writing yourself a loan. The Seabury Deposit Bank. Member FDIC. Go with Seabury. Go with Seabury Deposit. Get up and grow with the growing Dick's Finer Foods is closed all day Sunday to give their employees a day off to spend with their families. They're open six days a week to serve you in two convenient locations, Highway 41 North and at 1300 South Green Street in Henderson. Enjoy today and tomorrow shop the Dick's Finer Foods way. Dick's Finer Foods has it all, low prices, service, convenience. Here in Baltimore, the Bengals and Colts are scoreless elsewhere around the NFL. The Miami Dolphins have now taken a 7-6 lead over New England. San Diego with another field goal, now leading Tampa Bay 6-0. The New York Giants have up their lead over the Philadelphia Eagles to 10-0. And the Cardinals lead the Green Bay Packers 3-0. All of those either first or second period scores. The Bengals starting out at their own 40. Have a slot formation with Brooks and Curtis left. Hand off around the outside goes Griffin. 
Right to get around the corner, he does, but just for a couple of yards, and that's all. And a far side of the field, he's fall down at about the 42-yard line. Jackie Wallace and Darrell Luce, the linebacker on that side, along with Jim Shyunsky, the middle linebacker, all were into the stop, and Shyunsky limping slightly as he gets to his feet. The ball is at the Bengal 42, and Griffin running wide three times this afternoon has picked up a total of just about three or four yards, and that's all. It'll be second and eight. The Colts strictly a zone team against the pass. They rely on that front four and drop everybody else back as a rule. Five men are split both ways. They loop, and Anderson back to throw. It's over the head of Brooks on the far side of the field. The flag is down. And let's see. Anderson figured that Brooks would be right over near the sideline, but he was about six or eight yards away from Let's see if they had some obstruction on Brooks as he went out. Now it's a legal procedure against the Bengals. That will cost the Bengals five unless the Colts decline it, in which case it would bring up a third and eight, or it'll be second and 13. There's no score here in this ball game. The Bengals mounted a good drive after taking the opening kickoff, only to have Mumford's interception end it. And the Colts' first offensive series ended with a fumble by Stevens. And it's declined, so at the 42 now, it becomes third and eight. And this is the situation, of course, that a defensive line loves because they can just lay their ears back and come on in there. Free safety Jackie Wallace intercepted three passes last week in the ball game against New England. Cornerbacks will be off the line of scrimmage this time. Now the Bengals have three wide receivers in there and only one running back. Curtis and Brooks to the left. Chip Myers the right back. The throw goes to Anderson. Drops back deep. Fires the screen over there to Myers. And Chip won't get away. He's dropped at the 42-yard line by Lloyd Mumford. The cornerback on that side. Mumford diagnosed that screen to the slot well over there. McAnally will go in as we'll have our first one of the afternoon. Now, little Howard Stevens, the former Louisville star, is a man who returns the punt for the Baltimore Colts. Last week, he had a 15-yard average on returns against the New England Patriots. He brought two of them back to average that figure. They've got two shallow men with Stevens back at about the 15. McAnally averaged over 37 yards, about 37-2 last week against the Broncos. There's the snap back. McAnally gets it. Aims it over toward the sideline. It's not a good punt. It's taken at the 30-yard line. He signals fair catch. Alvin Morgan dropped him, but Morgan was past him and did not see the fair catch sign, but the Colts are arguing about it. Jackie Wallace was the man who took it in. Not a very good boot by McAnally at all. by McAnally, who didn't really seem to kick the ball hard. So for the second time this afternoon, now the Colts have the ball on offense. Lido Mitchell last year became the first Colt ever to gain over 1,000 yards. Glenn Dowdy comes to the right, and they send Roger Carr out to the left. Dowdy was the wing back in Michigan, but is a wide receiver here. He goes in motion. It's a quick pitch. Not outside Lydell Mitchell, and he's going no place. He gets a couple of yards, maybe. Jim LeClaire was over there to pin him down. Bob Brown circled the play around, was over there to help out. It's a gain of two. Dowdy came in motion on that side, and as he got up to the line of scrimmage, he stopped. He was right there to be a blocker on the play. Well, it's off back to Mitchell coming around to the right. A gain of two at the 32. It'll be second and eight. And they put wide men both ways. The backs are split this time. Leaks and Mitchell. Burt Jones drops back to throw. Looking. Fires far down to it. He's got a man down there. He has to be a touchdown. on both ends. A great throw by Burt Jones and Roger Carr just outraged Ken Riley. 
and never broke stride. Took it in at about the 15-yard line and went in unmolested. So now Tony Linhard will attempt the extra point. Two puts the ball down, the kick is up, and it is good. So this time out on the field. The score now, the Colts seven and the Bengals nothing. When you get the urge to know what you've got to do, you've got to satisfy that urge with a thing here Anytime you get the burger urge, you know what to do. Don't go around acting like a demented super jock. Reach into the cooler and pull out a better-than-ever burger. Don't be bamboozled. You've discovered the zingier, fresher flavor of burger beer. Brewing Company, Cincinnati, Ohio. Bert Jones was now three out of four passing for 81 yards, including that 68 yarder just now to Roger Carr. And lightning strikes quickly. The Colts leading by a score of seven to nothing. Cleveland has added a touchdown in the third quarter and now leads Pittsburgh 14 to nothing. How about that? Willie Shelby and Lenville Alley are the deep men. Tony Linhart will kick off. There's the whistle. Lenhart's kick will not be as long as the first one. It'll come down to Shelby at the 5. Comes straight up laterally to the 15, to the 20, to the 25. Still on his feet to the 30 and comes all the way out to the 35-yard line before he's stacked up by about three Colts. Over on the dirt. In between first base and second base on the baseball diamond. So the Bengals have pretty good field position out at the 35 after a 30-yard return by Willie Shelby and Nelson Munsey. Their cornerback was the man who brought him down there. You know, a very interesting factor on that Cleveland-Pittsburgh game this afternoon, Phil. Cleveland has never won at Three Rivers Stadium. But at halftime, they're leading the Steeders 14 to nothing. Oh, I thought that was in the third quarter. Is that the halftime? Half time? Maybe the Steeders haven't recovered from that one last week at Oakland. Curtis near side, Brooks far side. Bengals trailing here by seven points. Anderson goes back to throw. Looks, fires up the middle. It's caught by Brooks, and he's down in cold territory by Lloyd Mumford at about the 47 or 48-yard line. Billy Brooks, the gazelle-like number one draft choice out of Oklahoma, doing a slant, coming from the right side of the field, then slanting across right down the middle. The Colts, of course, are a zone club, and a zone can be hit in the middle, and that's right where Brooks slanted that time, and he was dragged down immediately at the 35. A quick gain of 17, and the Bengals have a first down. Now Brooks and Curtis both come to the near side. That'll bring Bruce Laird over to help out the right cornerback, Muncy. Actually, it's a double wing formation. Griffin, the only man in behind Anderson. A quick pitch. Round the outside. Archie gets the block and gets about three yards to the 45-yard line. Vern Holland got a good block over there on the linebacker, Jim Shiansky. And then Jackie Wallace came up in the safety spot to put the stop in Griffin at the 45 after Archie had picked up three. So it'll be second and seven. The nose of the ball right on the Colts 45. Colts lead it seven nothing on the 68 yard touchdown pass from Jones to Carr. Now it's nine formation. Curtis and Brooks are split on opposite sides. Anderson on a fake draw back to throw. Has time going long down the field. He overthrows Bill Brooks right down at about the three yard line. Anderson with good protection that time. But there was good coverage over there by Lloyd Mumford. Let's pause 15 seconds for station identification. You're listening to Cincinnati Bengals football and Baltimore Colts on WSO in Henderson. Griffin has carried four times for four yards this afternoon. And the Bengals at the Colts 45 have a third and seven. Chip Myers now. John McDaniel in the ball game as the Bengals go the three wide receivers again here in the third and seven play. Anderson back to throw. Looks, fires out in the flat. It's caught up to 50 to the 45. Tony Davis gets to about the 42, or Fritz, rather. Dan Fritz. But it will not be a first down. Stopped about four yards short. The Bengals hope to spread out that defense. Then Anderson just dropped it off to Fritz coming out the left side. But he was dropped at the Colts 42. Ray Oldham, who had gone in as the fifth defensive back to replace Shyunsky, 
was the man who was in on the stop. So McAnally will be in to boot again. And McAnally, of course, will be aiming for that top and corner. The line of scrimmage is the Colts 42-yard line. Snap back. McAnally gets the ball, angles it over toward the near side. It's a high boot. Will it go out or go into the end zone? It goes on into the end zone. So it'll come out to the 20. The Colts put it in play at that point. Colts leading at 7 to nothing here, and we have 3 minutes and 46 seconds left to play in this first quarter. They got it on that electrifying 68-yard pass from Jones to Roger Carr, and Carr had about a step on Ken Riley, and Riley leaped into the air trying to get the pass and fell down, and then Carr just romped in the last 20 yards unmolested. So the blue jersey Colts with that 7 to nothing lead break the huddle, send out Carr to the far side, Dowdy comes to the near side. Mitchell and Leakes to the running backs in behind Burt Jones. Now Dowdy comes in motion. The handoff into the line coming forward for about three yards as Roosevelt leaks. Bob Brown made the tackle on him as he came in over his own right guard and right tackle, Ron Carpenter, down at the bottom of the stack. The gain of about four on a straight off-power tackle. The 24, it will be second and six. Beautiful afternoon in Baltimore, 81 degrees at game time. Dowdy and Carr again go wide in the back. Mitchell and Leakes will split this time. They use Mitchell either way, into the line or wide. Again, Dowdy in motion. Hand off. Around the far side goes Leakes. He tried the left side, and he's hit behind the line of scrimmage. Coy Bacon and Ron Carpenter were both in there, and Leakes had no place to go as he tried to swing to the left. He was knocked down for a loss of a yard back at the 23. And that'll bring up a third and seven now for the Colts. Looked like there might have been a little bit of indecision on the part of Leakes that time. He definitely was swinging left, but he looked for a moment as though he wanted to go wide left, and then all of a sudden changed his mind, wanted to come up in the middle, but by that time it was too late. That Bengal sector, that Bengal line had swarmed around him, and it was a loss of uh, two yards. Don McCauley, who goes in on third down for Leakes or Mitchell, is in for Leakes this time. The Colts have a double wing formation, an obvious passing situation. Burt Jones back to throw. Fires up, it's intercepted, Casanova, down the sideline, it'll be a touchdown. Tommy Casanova stepped right in front of the intended receiver, Lydell Mitchell, and just picked that ball off at about the 30-yard line, and the Bengals are right back in it now, and Burt Jones comes off hanging his head dejectedly. I tell you, Bill Kohler was really, really bearing down on Jones, and Jones may not have seen Casanova over there at all. Tommy just stepped in front of Mitchell, I believe, out at the 30, and no one laid a hand on him as he went down the sidelines, and quickly now, Littlefoot, Chris Barr, could tie this up at 7-7. The tag, Littlefoot, hung on him by Coy Bacon, who has all kinds of names for people. Snap is high, but the kick is up in the air, and it is good. So the Bengals have tied it up on the interception by Casanova, Tommy's second interception of the year. He picked one off last week against the Denver Broncos. Hmm. And a great move by Casanova. He just stepped right in front of him at the last moment, and there was nobody there. And, of course, as I mentioned, Casanova and Burt Jones were teammates down at LSU. Casanova a year ahead of Jones, and they played together. They were chatting together before the ball game, but friendship ends right there. Talking about Chris Barr, a little foot, even though he's missed eight of his last 11 field goal attempts, he has been uh, almost perfect on extra points. He uh, has played here in Memorial Stadium before. As a matter of fact, he was the key figure in his team's victory the last time he played here in the stadium. He scored the game's only goal in a Philadelphia Adams win over the now-defunct Baltimore Comets in the summer of 75 when he won Rookie of the Year honors in the North American Soccer League. Well, Howard Stevens is the deep man, and Chris Barr will kick off now. Barr's kick is a good one. It'll be down to Howard Stevens very high right at the one. Stevens comes up to the 10, to the 15, slips and rolls down at about the 22. And he's pinned down there at that point by a couple of Bengals, Reggie Williams, one of those in there. And the mighty might from Louisville kind of stumbled as he tried to change direction there, just up over the 20. They'll put it down at the 22, and the coach will start from there. So we have a 7-7 seven seven ball game, two electrifying plays on the touchdown, a long pass by Baltimore, and then Casanova's interception for the Bengals. Early Bacon, or rather Johnson, Brown, Carpenter, and Bacon across the front. Double wing formation again for the Colts. Jones face rolls out to his left, goes back to throw, fires up the middle. Mitchell has it, is dragged down at the 35. Lydell Mitchell coming out of that backfield. Jim LeClaire picked him up and was right there to wrestle him down. 
But Burt Jones really drilled that ball to Mitchell, who is probably as good a catching running back as there is in this National Football League. And except upon that last pass that was intercepted by Casanova, Baltimore's offensive line has given Burt Jones pretty good protection. The ball is up at the 36, a 14-yard gain and a first down. It's 7-7 here with a minute 39 left in the half. Now Dowdy and Carr both split and the backs are in an eye behind Jones. Hand off to the second man, Lydell Mitchell, and he squirms his way forward to the 40. He gets about four yards as he just wiggled and stutter stepped in over that right side. Bo Harris along with Bob Brown were the men who made the stop on him. There wasn't much of a hole there. Mitchell really made it on his own as he just stutter stepped up there looking for the hole. And after the four yard pickup, the Colts will have a second and six. Burt Jones has hit four for six this afternoon for 94, but has the one interception, of course. Kenny Anderson is five for nine. The back's again in an eye. Jones looks both ways as he barks out those signals. Brings in Dowdy, a handoff into the line goes Mitchell. He's got about six. And it looks as though the hole might be rather wide open. He was cut down by Jim LeClaire and is very close to what he needed for the first down, a six-yard gain, as the nose of the ball is just shy of the Baltimore 46. They trapped up on the line on a little delay on a handoff from Jones to Mitchell, and Mitchell really accelerated once he got that ball. And they're bringing in the chain crew to measure. It is very close. It's just a matter of about two or three inches short. So that brings in McCauley along with their second tight end, who is Jimmy Kennedy, a second-year man from Colorado State. It's just inches, third and that amount, the Colts at their own 46-yard line. 53 seconds left to play in the first quarter. It's a 7-7 ball game. Bengals with five men up and three linebackers. Up jammed right in behind. Hand off into the line. I don't know. He's a big pile-up. Can't see where the ball carrier, Don McCauley, went. Have to wait until they unstacked. They only had inches to go. It isn't likely he could have been stopped. But Bo Harris just completely obstructed our view as he came swinging around from the side. They got just a few inches on the play, and that's all they needed. It is the first down as the ball is just covering the 46-yard line. A couple of changes in scores now at halftime. The New England Patriots have taken a 13-7 lead over the Miami Dolphins. And at halftime, the Houston Oilers and the Buffalo Bills all even at 3-3. Roosevelt Lease is back in the Baltimore backfield. They have Carr and Dowdy, both split. And again, Dowdy goes in motion toward the line of scrimmage. A fake handoff back to throw. The quick hook is complete to Carr, and Riley has him down at the Bengals' 40-yard line. Carr looked as though he were going deep that time, then hooked back at the Bengals' 40. And on a perfectly timed play, Burt Jones put it right in his numbers, and Riley was there to drag him down. But it's a cold first down at the 40 as the first quarter closes. That's the end of the quarter. Well, the score of the Bengals, seven and the Colts, seven. Why tie up your money in a long-term certificate account when you can now earn 6.5% interest on a one-year certificate with a minimum deposit of only $1,000? Henderson Home Federal will compound your interest daily, and you can let your interest accumulate, or you can have it mailed to you directly. And your savings are safe at Henderson Home Federal. They're insured up to $40,000. For your convenience, Henderson Home Federal has an accounts desk that will give you information on all the savings plans they offer. Henderson Home Federal, corner of 3rd and Elm Henderson. They have the new $1,000 minimum investment one-year certificate that earns 6.5% interest compounded daily. And you can even use the handy drive-in window for your transactions at Henderson Home Federal. Put your dollars where they'll grow. At Henderson Home Federal, corner of 3rd and Elm, Henderson. It's 140 at Radio 86, WSO in Henderson. Your spot for sports. Starting the second quarter, we have a 7-7 ball game here between the Bengals and the Baltimore Colts. And the Bengals are going to have to get a little more pressure on Burt Jones because it doesn't take him long to get that ball away. The Bengals at their own 40-yard line having to dig in. They have wide men spread both ways. Hand off is Lydell Mitchell trying to squirm in the line. He's got a couple of yards as he wiggled in over left tackle. Ron Pritchard, first man to get to him. And there was a lot of help there from Carpenter. Jim LeClaire was also in there. The gain is a couple of yards to the 38, and it will be a second and eight for the Colts. 7-7 seven, seven here as we're in the first minute of the second quarter. The Bengals' defense Got the Bengals touchdown, an interception by Casanova. Officially, I don't know how long it was, but it was right about at the Colts' 30-yard line where he picked it off and ran it back in. 
They got it on a 68-yard pass from Jones to Carr. Out the double wing formation with only leaks in behind Jones. Rolling out to his right is Burt Jones looking to pass oh. knocked down by Kenny Johnson right in Burt Jones' face. As he rolled to his right and tried to throw over that way, Kenny Johnson was right on top of him. And Kenny Johnson at 6'6", just got those big arms up in the air and batted that pass away. So it'll come back to the 38 and will be third and eight. And Bill Kohler is in there on the passing situation replacing Bob Brown. McCauley goes in as usual on a third down play. Usually if they're going to run, he'll replace Mitchell. And if they figure on passing, he'll replace Leakes. Leakes is the man who has come out this time. Neither quarterback has been sacked thus far. Jones fakes and goes back to throw. Coy Bacon chasing him, and Coy knocks him down back at the 48-yard line. Hit him from behind and got to him. He forced Jones to run to his right, and then Bacon got him from behind before he could get the pass away back at the 47, so that will force the Colts to punt. Just as I was talking about uh, Kenny Anderson throwing only one interception in every 33 attempts a while ago, up he comes with the uh, interception, and when Phil was talking about neither quarterback being sacked, bingo, we get a sack by Coy Bacon. It was a great time to get it, too. So David Lee, who averaged 47 yards on three punts, will probably angle it toward the coffin corner. There's the snap back, and he drills the boot high, and it will go on into the end zone, lands a couple yards deep, and it'll come out to the 20. So there's time out on the field. Score, Bengal 7, Colts 7. Right now, see your Chevy dealer. Because right now, a lot of Chevrolet dealers are having their garage sale on 1976 Chevrolets. They have to make room for the 77 Chevrolets that will be coming in this fall. So right now, a lot of Chevy dealers are having their garage sale on 76 models. What it all means is that you'll likely get just about the best deals you can get on some of the best cars and trucks you can get. Chevrolets. You'll find a variety of models to choose from. Sporty Monza 2 Plus 2s. Dressy Monza Town Coupes. Top Chevy Vegas. Chevettes. Plus bigger size Monte Carlos. Chevelles and Impalas. You'll likely find great deals on all those great cars and trucks at your Chevy dealers right now. Why? Because when your Chevy dealer has a garage sale, it's that get a great deal on a Chevy time of year. So see your Chevy dealer for a great deal on a brand new 1976 Chevrolet. And do it today. Jimmy Trump along with Phil Samp back at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore where our score is 7-7 with 13-49 remaining in the second quarter. Updated scores in the third quarter now. The Atlanta Falcons lead the Detroit Lions 10-0. In the first quarter, it's St. Louis 6 and Green Bay nothing. The Bengals now moving from left to right as we look at them, left to right across your radio dial. Kenny Anderson may have a bit of a problem with the sun because he'll be looking directly into it. Tim Myers has replaced Billy Brooks. Glenville Elliott has replaced Archie Griffin. Hand off around the right side comes Glenville Elliott, and he flips as he tries to cut in and just gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. He'll be pinned down, put down right there. Elliott slipping as he tried to cut in. Darryl Luce right there to make sure that he was down. So there's no gain in the play. And at the 20, it will be second and 10. The Bengals are on the far side of the field. Baltimore Colt bench right in front of us. Our vantage point is not very high, and we're fairly close to the field. A good observation point. Myers left side. Near side is Curtis. The back split behind Anderson. Kenny drops straight back to throw. Look, fires downfield. There's Curtis. Or Myers. He has it down the sideline at the 40, 35 to the 30, 25, and he's wrestled down at about the cold 15-yard line. Coming over with Nelson Muncy. What a beautiful pattern Myers ran that time. He ran straight downfield, then veered to the sideline, and that's where he lost Muncy. And Myers took the ball in, and Muncy, trying to come back, ran all the way out of bounds and came back onto the field to finally drag him down. They're going to stay at the 17-yard line. So there's the first long one of the afternoon that the Bengals have connected up with. It carries from their own 20 to the Colts' 17, and quick arithmetic shows that's good for 63 quick yards. And there's the mark of an old pro, as Phil said, Chip Myers running a perfect pass pattern and forced the man to run out of bounds and come back in to catch him and then gave him a stiff arm and picked up another two or three yards while the man was hanging on. And now Myers has gone out, and Brooks has come back in. The Bengals down at the Colts' 17. Backs in an eye. They're Fritz and Elliott. 
Fake handoff, back to throw. Anderson fires into the end zone. Trumpy touchdown. Bob Trumpy off on the left flat. Hit beaten their safety man. And then Nelson Muncy came over and tried to cover. And Trumpy just caught that ball in the corner, right down by the pylon. So it's two quick passes. And the Bengals go 80 yards, 63 to Chip Myers. And the final 17 to Bob Trumpy. And the Bengals jump out in front now, 13 to 7. Trumpy really had Munsey on the ropes down there, and Anderson drilled that ball into him perfectly. The line gave him excellent protection, a long time to throw, and now Littlefoot will try to make it 14 to 7. Marvin Cobb will hold. Ball is down, the kick is up in the air, and it is good. So there's time out on the field with the score now. The Bengals 14 and the Colts 7. Deli is the delicatessen in downtown Henderson with delicious meat, cheeses, salads, and desserts. And now Corkscrew's Deli is serving beer. That's right, good cold beer. There are many sandwiches to choose from. Roast beef, corned beef, ham, pastrami, turkey, salami, pepper beef, kielbasi, all beef bologna, all beef kosher hot dogs, cheese and crackers, Reuben or hoagie. Add one of seven different cheeses to your sandwich and enjoy it on your own choice of bread. There are four different breads, too, plus bagels. Corkscrew's Deli has soup and salads also, plus party trays and catering service. Eat in or carry out at Corkscrew's Deli. They're open Monday through Thursday from 11 to 6, Friday 11 to 8, and Saturday 11 to 4. Enjoy real delicatessen food at Corkscrew's Deli, 103 North Main in downtown Henderson. Well, 16 left in the second quarter. The Bengals have taken a 14-7 lead. The Bengals moving 80 yards in three plays for the touchdown. There's Barr's boot, and it'll sail back into the end zone about four yards deep, and Stevens will come out. He's at the 5 to the 10, and oh, is he driven down at about the 17-yard line. There was a tremendous hit over there by Tony Davis. Davis carries that ball, and he was running just like a ball carrier, and he really drilled little Howard Stevens at about the 17 or 18-yard line. And the Colts will be starting out from there. Tony Davis has been an excellent hard hitter on these special teams. The ball is just over the 17. For statistical purposes, it'll be the 18. And the Colts will start from there. The Bengals in front, 14 to 7 here in the second quarter. Got a lot of time to go over 12 minutes. They put Carr and Dowdy on both sides. Burt Jones goes straight back to throw. Fires incomplete. He intended it for Dowdy on a slant, but the pass was low. And it went into the dirt. On the baseball diamond in front of Dowdy, who was slanting in. Bernard Jackson was coming over there to help out on that side. And Kenny Roddy, the cornerback. So it went incomplete, and it'll be second and 10. Well, it took the Bengals just three plays from their 20-yard line. A no-gainer by Elliott. And then two quick passes. One from 63 yards to Myers to put it down on the 17. And the Bengals came right back on a pass from Anderson to Trumpy to score. Double wing formation this time. Leak's the only man in behind. Leak's gets it, and he gets nowhere as he tries to come up over the middle. He's nailed for a loss, perhaps, by Bob Brown. Bob Brown put his 290 pounds into Roosevelt Leak's, and Leak's was just out of the block when Bob Brown wrapped him up none too gently and just drilled him right back at about the 17-yard line. You know, we used to talk, uh, Phil, about how quickly Mike Reed came off that ball. Bob Brown comes off the ball just as quickly, perhaps even more so, as you've seen when the Bengals play at home, he comes off so quickly, he tries to anticipate the call that many times he, he is called for being offside. The Steelers have scored. Now it's 14-7, Cleveland in the third quarter. Still third about 11 for the Colts. Back to throw goes Jones. Looking, now he's going to run. Still looking, now he stops and throws upfield incomplete. He threw it away. There was nobody up there. The closest man to it was Pritchard. And Ron Carpenter drilled Burt Jones, and they get up and shake hands with each other. There wasn't any coat anywhere near that place, so the Bengals' defense has done just what it's had to do. They'll force David Lee to boot from deep in his own territory at the 16. But he puts a lot of foot into that ball. So the Bengals have their three men back. Shelby and Perry are the deep men. Short man is Marvin Cobb. David Lee standing back at about the one-yard line. He'll kick from about the six. The snap from center is good. And he gets it away. Oh, what a oh. tremendous booming spiral. Back to Parrish all the way up to the 29. Leach takes it there at the 30. 
at the 35, still on his feet, can't get away, but does get back to the 40. That punt was so high that Baltimore had a lot of time to get men downfield, and Parrish did a good job in getting it back about 11 yards before Tim Bader got him. So the Bengals will have the ball at their own 40 and start out this drive from there. That was a tremendous boot. Let's see, a 29-16, that made it about 55 yards by rough calculation. Let's see, 29 6, 55, right. 55 yards and an 11 yard return by Lamar Parrish. Ball first and 10 for the Bengals at their own 40 yard line. 11 03, left in the second period. Bengals leading at 14 to 7. Brooks lines up tight, left side. Curtis on the right side. Fritz and Elliott, the running back. Anderson with the ball, gives to Fritz. In over left tackle. Stan fights his way up for maybe a couple, but that's about all he can muster as he tried to slam in over that left tackle behind Mays. And John Shinner's over there. A lot of Colts in on the tackle, about three or four. Joe Ehrman, the last man up off the sack, and it's a 42. It becomes second and eight. Now Griffin goes back into the ball game, replacing Landville Elliott. Archie has carried four times for four yards. Now both Brooks and Curtis go to the far side in a slot. Trumpy lines up at the right side. It's a strong left formation. Now Curtis comes in motion. Over to the near side of the field, and Anderson goes back to throw. Anderson looks, fires out all alone. Griffin has it. He's down to the close 35-yard line before he's dragged down. Archie came out of the backfield and really did a curly cue over on that far side on Nelson Muncy. And when Anderson drilled that ball to him, there was no one within five yards of Griffin. He gathered in at the 40 and fought his way ahead for another five to the 35. I was watching Archie that time, having uh, just seen him come on the field to replace Lenville Elliott. And he did just what Phil said. He came out of the backfield, went right straight downfield, did a little hook at about the 40-yard uh, line, took the pass in, and then took it on down to the 35. It was good for a quick 23 and a first down. Hand off the second man. Griffin goes into the line. He stopped, but the flag goes down. In the whistle blew, I didn't notice the time clock. The Bengals may not have beat it on that play. Let's see. No, it's a illegal procedure against the Bengals, which will cost them five. That'll move it back to the 40. I don't believe the Colts have been penalized this afternoon. This is the second illegal procedure call that I remember against the Bengals. It's been a relatively penalty-free game. They'll come back to the 40 now, and it'll be first and 15. You know, Phil, they've had quite a bit of... Uh, turmoil over here in recent days with the March of Broto resignation and then rehiring 48 hours later. At halftime, uh, we're going to have as our special guest, Joe Thomas, the general manager of the Baltimore Colts, who was uh, involved in that brouhaha. I'll say he was involved. Nobody knows more about it than Joe Thomas. So we'll see what we can find out at halftime. Slot formation, both Brooks and Curtis to the left now. Anderson goes back to throw. Hand off and a delay draw up the middle of Fritz. Fritz all the way down inside the 30. That slow draw play into the 28-yard line before the middle linebacker, Jim Shyunsky, can haul him down. He gained about 11 yards on the play. Anderson dropped back. The pressure was from the outside. And he just reached around Fritz and handed the ball to him. And Fritz bolted straight up and down into the 28. Give him 12 on the play. And it'll make it second down now and about three. Bengals lead is 14-7. Nine minutes and ten seconds left here in this first half. The Eagles lead the Giants 13 to nothing in the third quarter. The Bengals down at the infield end of Memorial Stadium here. Hand off into the right side goes Griffin. First into the clear momentarily and gets down inside the 20 to about the 19. Only one man between him and the goal line. Dragged down by, I believe, Jackie Wallace, number 20, got him, or Bruce Laird, number 40, but a big hole opened on the right side. And that has been Griffin's longest run in a regular season game. That one was good for nine. And it will be a first down. And the Bengals leading 14 to seven are down knocking again at the Colts door. Brooks and Curtis go out left. Fritz and Griffin the running back. Kenny Anderson gives the ball to Fritz. Stand up the middle. He's got a lot of room and he's all the way down inside the 10 to about the nine. Big blocking in the middle of that line by Lapham, Bob Johnson along with Glenn Bushnock, and it was a straight-ahead play, and they just moved the Colts out of there. Mumford and Wallace had to come up from the secondary to make the stop. Fritz gained another 10 yards on the play. And we'll bring in the chains now to measure. Well, if Stan Fritz's knees can hold up, Phil, and they seem to be getting better all the time. He still has knee problems, but they seem to be getting better. And if those knees can hold up, it could be that the Bengals have found the big running back, the big fullback that they've been looking for and the kind of response from their fullback personnel that they haven't gotten since Booby Clark gained almost a thousand yards three years ago. 
Dan Fritz has ripped off good yardage this afternoon. Fritz has carried five times now for 39 yards. First and goal for the Bengals at the Colt nine. Brooks and Curtis line up out of the left side. The back split behind Anderson. And off dripping into the right side. He fights his way forward for a couple of hard-earned yards. Stan White and Mike Barnes in on the tackle. Mike Barnes, the big fourth-year man from Miami, 6'6 and 256. Griffin got two down to the seven-yard line, and it will be second and goal at that point. Here's the place where the Bengals do not want to be stopped. No team does. When you get down close, you want to be able to punch that ball in. But the yards are tough to go by down here. Second and goal at the seven. This time, Anderson swings both Curtis and Brooks out to the right side. Wallace comes over to cover with the cornerback on that side, Lloyd Mumford. Anderson rolling out to his right, looking down into the end zone, throws it away. There's nobody open down there. Both Brooks and Curtis were covered. Brooks threw his hand up into the air, but that's before Anderson had a chance to look down and see. So now on third down and goal at the seven, let's see what the Bengals pull out. John Shinners brings in the play, and Glenn Bougenock goes out. 7.21 showing on the clock. It stopped after the incompleted pass. The Bengals lead it 14 to 7 after the Colts jumped out to a 7 to nothing lead in the first quarter. The ball right at the Colts 7. Curtis goes to the far side. To the near side comes Brooks. Wide split in the back behind Anderson. Let's see what they're going to do. Anderson rolls out to his right. Looks downfield. Now there's nobody there, and he runs and gets to the nine, and that's all. He was pinned down by Joe Ehrman. Billy Brooks had drawn a couple of men over to the right side. I believe that's where Anderson wanted to go. That's where he looked. Trumpy was down in the end zone. So was Curtis. But Anderson couldn't find anybody and had to run. So it'll bring in Chris Barr. Four and a field goal attempt. Barr last week was just one out of three against Denver. The ball will be placed down at the 16-yard line. It'll make it a 26-yard attempt. Barr did not have a good preseason by any means in the long one. The ball is snapped down. This kick is up in the air, and this one, I believe, is, yes, it is good. So this time he hits them 26 yards, and there's time out on the field. The score now, the Bengals 17 and the Colts 7. Chris Barr, who had missed eight of his last 11 field goal attempts, hits one from 26 yards out. And with 6.42 remaining in the second quarter here at Memorial Stadium, it's the Bengals 17, the Baltimore Colts 7. So Stevens, the deep man, flanked by Laird and McCauley. Fires kick is high. This time it'll be Stevens taking it at the 5. Up straight to the 10, to the 15, to the 20. Comes up at the 30. The 35-yard line still on his feet. A flag is down. He's in Bengals field. At the 49-yard line, but a flag was thrown back at the Colts 35, and let's see if we got a clip or something in there. Chris Barr was the man in on the tackle, and now let's see what the flag is going to be. It apparently is going to be against the Colts, and it's probably 15. It's a personal foul against Baltimore. It'll take it from their own 36-yard line back to their 21. Stevens got it back all the way to the Bengals' 49-yard line. Chris Barr got it. They didn't indicate that it was clipping, just that it was a personal foul. That'll take it back to the Colts 21 or 22 yard line, make it. It's not a personal foul call, so I looked at him closer, he indicated holding. No doubt in cars split now, and the Colts will be starting at their own 22. Leaks and Mitchell with a split in behind Burt Jones. Jones drops back, quick slant, caught by Carr, and he's going to be dragged down by Kenny Riley at about the 35 yard line. Burt Jones on that quick slant into Roger Carr, gained 13 in the play. And the Colts have that quick first down. For six minutes now, left to play in this first half, the Bengals hold a 17-7 lead. The pass protection by both teams has been good. Coy Bacon sacked Burt Jones once. That was after he was chased out of the pocket, and Bacon got him from behind. Double wing formation now, Mitchell out in the slot. They like to send him downfield and all over. Roosevelt leaks the only man back. Back to throw is Burt Jones, still looking. Fires upfield, it's deflected, Riley intercepts it. At the 50, down to the 35. Fires out of the field to the 40, to the 30, to the 20, and he's going to be knocked out. Oh! And it's picked up by a Bengal who is on the ball on a pitcher's mound out his back, and let's see who got it. The Colts are signaling they got it. A Bengal had it, and it's recovered by the Baltimore Colts. And Kenny Riley is really sick. He'd run that ball all the way back to the 17-yard line. I thought a Bengal had the ball, but it was 
under him as he was lying on the ball. And then when he came off, the Cole got it. I couldn't tell who. Riley picked that ball off after it was deflected by the short receiver and looked as though he might go all the way, but it was knocked out of his hands way back at the 17-yard line. And the Colts finally recovered the ball at their own 12, right by the pitcher's mound. That's where the scramble for the ball was. Riley just buried his head down in the grass after he saw that the Colts had recovered the fumble. Pittsburgh has the field goal now, and it's 14 to 10 in the third quarter. So the Colts will have a first down back at their own 12-yard line after a lot of excitement. Back to throw is Jones. He's going far downfield. Riley and stepped out of bounds. Roger Carr at the Bengals 37-yard line. And Casanova called for a personal foul down in the end zone after he tackled him late. But he has stepped out of bounds at the Bengals 37. And now let's see how they will mark off that penalty. The play has been dead, so I don't believe that any foul. Now, wait a minute. Now they're going all the way back to the line of scrimmage. Now, let's see what this one is for a consultation back there. Carr definitely stepped out of bounds at the 37 in front of the Colts bench. He did go all the way down into the end zone. And Casanova hit him when he was about five yards in the end zone, and a flag was thrown down there. The officials are discussing it with the Bengals. This is a weird one. Roger Carr got that step on Kenny Riley again, but went out of bounds after he caught the ball. The penalty is going to be against the Colts. Either that or they're going to be offsetting penalties. This is one where we're just going to have to wait. It's a legal procedure called against the Baltimore Colts. And a personal foul against the Bengals, that will nullify it. So it is called a personal foul, and they're offsetting penalties. Against uh, Casanova down in the end zone, all the play was dead. So that'll bring it back to the 12-yard line, and all that excitement is over, and it will remain first and 10. Well, that nullifies the long gainer. Uh, we've had a lot of excitement on two plays, only for the ball to wind up. Right at the 12-yard line. Riley had intercepted a pass, and the Bengals were in great position. Only to fumble it and lose it. Another Bengal picked it up and then lost it. And then another one flopped on it and was lying on the ball. But somehow it got out from under him and a cold recovery. Well, that's past history. All history is in the past. First and 10. Back split. You see a handoff and a quick pitch around the right side goes Lydell Mitchell. Got some room. He comes up to the 20 and is going to be knocked down finally at the 23. Mitchell tried to cut in, and as he did so, Jim LeClaire, the middle linebacker, was over there to pin him down. But he gained about 11 on the play, and will have a first down. Lydell Mitchell on a sweep wide right. Got some blocking and a couple of men out in front of him. Did manage to gain 11 yards, and that will be the first down. And Mitchell is one of those type of ball players, one of the type of slashing runners who can hurt you whether he's going inside or outside. He can hurt you on the sweep, and yet at 6 feet and 190 pounds, he has the power to go up the middle and pick up the yardage and hurt you inside as well. So we're ready to go. Burt Jones back to throw. Looks, fires out in the flat. It's incomplete. Roosevelt Lee couldn't get the pass, which was low, right down about his shoe tops, and he couldn't scoop it up. Casanova was over there to quickly cover him. So at the 23 now, it'll be second and 10. Bengals lead it 17 to 7, with 418 left to play in this first half. Jones is now 6 for 13 for 122 yards on the afternoon and one touchdown and two interceptions. Bill Culler has gone in to replace Bob Brown at the left tackle spot. Second and 10, Colts at their own 23. Jones fakes, goes back to throw. Looks, fires up, Bill! It's complete. The man drops at the Colts 39-yard line. Can't see who it is going up high to make the catch over there was Roger Carr. Carr, the third-year man from Louisiana Tech, was the man who caught that 68-yard touchdown pass. And Burt Jones, again, had excellent protection from his line. He completed that 16-yard play for the first down. Carr was immediately hit by a couple of angles as he caught the ball, but he made a good reaching catch. Kohler goes out, Bob Brown comes back in. begins to chant for the hometown Colts to trail 17 to 7. 
Dowdy in motion. Hand off in the left side of the line. Bob Brown wrestles down Roosevelt Leak for a loss. It was a Coy Bacon. Coy Bacon, the right end, was the man who got over there and made the stop, and there may be a loss on the play. Ron Carpenter was right there to help out if needed. There was a loss of a yard as Bacon nailed Leak, and it will be second and 11. That time it was Coy Bacon who was off the ball quickly, and it's difficult uh, sometimes watching them as quickly as they come off the ball to tell whether it is Bob Brown or Coy Bacon, but that time it was Bacon. Three minutes now, the time remaining in this first half. The Colts want to get something up on the board before it ends. They have a second and 11 at their own 38. Burt Jones gives the ball on an end around. It's Lydell Mitchell. Now he's got some room over there. Comes up to the 35 and knocked down with a fine tackle at the 41-yard line. And a man who got him was Bernard Jackson. They gave it to him on an end around play. And he had a couple of blocks over there, but wound up after a lot of excitement, a lot of running with just a three-yard gain out to the 41. And that will make it third and eight. Lydell Mitchell, a running back, lined up out in the flank, came around and took that handoff, and he was almost hit for a loss of about seven or eight yards by someone. I didn't catch him, but he did manage to get away. Now McCauley goes in in the third down situation. Replaces Lee. Burt Jones goes back to throw. Has plenty of time. Look, fires down the middle. Incomplete. A flag is going to be thrown. It's going to be pass interference against Riley on Glenn Dowdy. They say he came around his neck at the Bengals' 35-yard line. And that will give the Colts a lease on life for the Bengals' 35 with 2.04 left in the half. Boy, Burt Jones had all the time in the world to throw. Coy Bacon was trying to fight his way through David Taylor, but he couldn't. And Riley, who had an interception, which certainly set the Bengals up in scoring position, only to lose the ball on a fumble, now feels extra bad because he's called for pass interference, and he's the guy that lost Roger Carr on their touchdown pass. Ever since uh, Coy Bacon got that sack on Burt Jones early in the second quarter, that offensive line has perked up, and they have given him excellent protection. Well, the Colts will have time to run off one play before we get to the two-minute mark. They come out in a double wing formation with only leaks in behind Burt Jones. Jones back to throw. Blitz is on. Fires a quick out. It's caught. Dowdy goes out of bounds at the 22 on the far side of the field. A quick out from Jones to Glenn Dowdy. And the Colts are on the move here now. A 13-yard gainer at the 22. There's time out on the field. Score Bengals 17 and the Colts 7. So when's the babysitter going to be here? Oh, in about 15 minutes. Yeah, I hope this is a good movie. Well, it got rave reviews in the paper. That doesn't mean anything. Oh, that makes me so mad. What well, now? I just snagged my last pair of pantyhose. Don't worry about it. I'll pick you up a pair at convenience. When you need something in a hurry, you can depend on Convenience Food Mart to make life a little more convenient. We make life a little more convenient. For your insurance needs, see an independent insurance agent of Henderson. The independent insurance agents of Henderson, Kentucky, take pride in caring about the needs of the community. Call a member agency for your insurance. Members are E.J. Mabry Insurance, Collier & Lackey, Atkins & Stanley, Star Thompson & Bird, Causey Springer, Hunt Dixon, and Royster & Lambert. They're the independent insurance agents of Henderson. They'll be glad to serve you. half at Baltimore's Memorial Stadium. The Bengals lead the Baltimore Colts by a score of 17-7. The Pittsburgh Steelers have now taken a 17-14 lead over the Cleveland Browns in the third quarter. The Atlanta Falcons leading Detroit 10-0 in the second period. St. Louis Cardinals have added another field goal and now lead the Green Bay Packers 9-0 in the uh, first quarter. And the Philadelphia Eagles lead the New York Giants 13-0. That is in the fourth period. The ball is at the Bengals' 23-yard line now as they've respotted it. With two minutes to go in the half, the Colts have it there on a first down. Again, Burt Jones getting excellent protection. Dowdy wide in the slot is Carr. Now Mitchell goes out in motion to the right side, leaving only leaks and behind Burt Jones back to throw. Fires one down, wobbled, and Riley dives and can't come up with it. Somebody got a hand on the ball, and Kenny Riley diving for it almost intercepted it. But it's incomplete. At the 23 now, it'll be second and 10. That time the Bengals were closing in on Jones, and somebody deflected that pass and turned it into a wobbler. 
It only took four seconds, 156 left in the first half. Bengals lead it 17 to 7. Kurt Jones is 8 out of 16 this afternoon. He's been intercepted twice and has one touchdown pass. Again, it's the double wing formation. Jones with the ball, goes back to his left, goes back to throw. Fires out in the flat, incomplete. Poorly thrown pass by Jones. Dowdy coming back off in the left flat at about the 12 or 13 yard line. Was angling back as he was breaking out. But the pass thrown too far in front of him. And now it'll be third and 10 at the 23. That stops the clock with one minute and 53 seconds remaining. The Colts 23 yards away from Fader, they trail 17 to 7. We've had a lot of excitement, a lot of action here in the second period. Now the Steelers, after spotting the Browns, 14 points have come back for a 17-14 lead. Both backs in behind Jones. Now Mitchell again goes in motion out the far side of both receivers left side. Back to throw is Jones, lobs it down into the end zone, touchdown to Rochester. Going to run, he's going to be dropped at the 39-yard line. He 
to his right and look but there was no one there now the Bengals will go without benefit of huddle the clock is stopped while they wait for the Baltimore players to get back it stopped at 117 and now the Bengals will have a third and eight Anderson back to throw look steps up in the pocket now looks over the far side of the field down to the 40 makes it the 35 and knocked down right there at the 35 yard line and he is really knocked down seconds as the clock is stopped. The Bengals will have a fourth and about five. Chris Barr is going in for a field goal attempt. Barr is in there. It is fourth down with 59 seconds left. Anderson still being administered to in the far side of the field. I think that he had the wind knocked out and he got a real shot in the chest. He may have a little trouble breathing or bringing out a stretcher. Now he's getting up to his feet, I believe. Caught that shot by Stan White, that forearm in the uh, neck. Now Anderson is up to his feet. Very groggy, however. Walking off under his own power. I think he had the breath knocked out of him. Ron Hunt and Bruce Coslett uh, helping him off the field. He may have taken a shot in the throat, Bill, when, that, when he came around, it was almost like a necktie tackle. Yeah, because he went right straight backwards. So it'll be a field goal attempt of some 52 yards if Barr misses it. Why, the... Uh, Baltimore Colts going to have pretty good field position. The ball will be spotted down on the dirt by Cobb at the 42. All right, the lines are down. The ball is snapped. There's the kick. It is plenty long. And is it good? It is. Chris Barr drills it from 52 yards out. And, oh, did he kick that ball? That would have been good from 60. Chris Barr with a 52-yard field goal. He is two for two in the afternoon. But now that gives the Baltimore Colts time to make use of the clock. 55 seconds are left. And Barr will kick. They said 51 officially. That was 52, wasn't it? It looked more like 52 to me. 51 is the official yardage. But that makes the score 20 to 14 Bengals now. Doesn't make any difference whether it's 51 or 52. It still has three points on the scoreboard. So Chris Barr set to kick off with Stevens, the deep man. are going to let this one bounce along. It bounces in the hands of Stevens. He touches it and rolls back into the end zone. Now he's going to down it back there, so it'll come back out to the 20. Let's look about eight seconds off the clock. They've got 51 left, as they'll have it at the 20. That ball bounced along the ground. A Colt touched it, and Stevens tried to scoop it up at about the three-yard line, but the ball went back into the end zone. It was down for a safety. Some of you may wonder why it was not a free ball, why he wouldn't have to run it. Nobody had possession of it. It was just a muff, not a fumble. The rules of a fumble do not pertain. So the Colts will start at their own 20 with a first and 10. And they'll get a lot of plays run off here in his final 51 seconds. 20 to 14 Bengals now as Chris Barr really drilled that field goal. He's hit two of them, 26 and 52. Doughty comes in motion on the near side. A handoff, it's Leakes trying left side. And he's got a yard and that's all as he tried left tackle. He was really wrapped up by Glenn Cameron, who's in there at a linebacker spot now. That was Lydell Mitchell trying to run, and he got nothing at all. He thought the Bengals might be looking for pass, and they could cross him up with a run. But at the 21, it becomes second and nine, and the Colts are making no effort to stop the clock. 28 seconds of time left here in the first half. Kenny Anderson is seated next to Dr. George Ballou on the far side of the field, not drinking a glass of water, shaking his head occasionally, but he appears to be all right. The Bengals have four linebackers in there and three defensive linemen. Clock down to 13. Steve Jones will elect to put it up in the air here in the last gasp effort in this first half. No, he's not. He's going to hand off to Lydell Mitchell, who breaks up to about the 29-yard line before he's hauled down by Coy Bacon, and that will bring the first half to an end. Once again, our score at halftime here at Memorial Stadium is the Bengals 20 and the Colts 14. Bill Stamp and Jimmy Crown back at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. The Bengals will kick off to start the second half. They'll be going left to right as we look here at the stadium. Kenny Anderson came back out onto the field with his teammates here in the second half. John Reeves has been warming up. They'll just have to wait and see whether Anderson plays or not. 
after Chris Barlow drilled that 52-yard field goal just before intermission, gets set to kick off. There's the kick. It's a high one. It'll come to Howard Stevens, a yard deep in the end zone. Comes out to the 10, to the 15. Gets up to about the 20, 22, 23-yard line, and Scott Perry rides him down. Also in and uh, to slow him up, Reggie Williams was over there. Along with Willie Shelby and Scott Perry finally dumped Stevens at the 23-yard line. And the Colts go from there. Bengals lead it 20-14. to 14. The difference in the ball game has been the two field goals by Chris Barr. Burt Jones in the first half of the ball game threw two touchdown passes. He was 9 for 18, and he had two intercepted. So we're ready to go. They have Glenn Dowdy and Roger Carr out wide. The backs are in and eye. Now Dowdy goes in motion. Hand off into the line, getting a little running room and coming out to about the 28-yard line is Lydell Mitchell. Went around the right side and cut back in. Bob Brown hauled him down. He gained about five on the play. The Colts' running game in the first half was pretty well restricted. They had just 47 yards. The Bengals, on the other hand, gained 102. So it's a five-yard gain by Lydell Mitchell on the first play, and it will be second and five. Bengals' defensive unit the same. Colts bring Dowdy to the near side. To the far side goes Carr. Leakes and Mitchell are running backs. Burt Jones is quarterback. Again, Dowdy comes in motion to the line and no farther. Into the line goes Leakes, and he ran into a stone wall led by Bob Brown, who hit him first. Really slowed him up, and you could hear those shoulder pads hit all the way up here. And right away, quickly, in on top of it were Pritchard and LeClaire. Put Leakes down after a one-yard gain, and he was put down very, very roughly. So now McCauley goes in to replace Leakes as the Colts look at a third and four. Bengals lead it 20 to 14. We're just into the third quarter of play. The backs are split behind Jones. They like to send those backs out. Jones goes back to throw. Fires upfield. Is caught at the 35-yard line by Lydell Mitchell, and he's down right there, but that is enough for the first down. Bo Harris was over there, so were Jim LeClaire. But... Burt Jones really drilled that ball. It's a gain of six, and the Colts have the first down and retain possession. I was watching Burt Jones during his pregame warm-up, uh, particularly when we were down on the field, and he was talking with uh, Tommy Casanova. He had one of the assistant coaches down there that he was throwing to, and he can really put the mustard on that thing. He fires it, and it's like a 30-30 rifle shell coming out of there. Well, ironically, the Bengals' first touchdown came when Casanova intercepted one by Jones and ran it back 31 yards for a touchdown. Colts at their own 35 come out of the double wing, Burt Jones goes back to throw. Looks, fires a quick out that is tipped. Oh. Incomplete. The receiver almost got to a Dowdy. And a man who tipped it up in the air back there was Bull Harris, and it popped up in the air. Curry's went for it, so did Dowdy, but it fell incomplete. Good defensive play by Bo Harris, who had really dropped back deep about 20 yards downfield. So at the 35, now back in cold territory, it becomes second and 10. Bengals lead it 20 to 14. We're just into the third quarter of play. Two minutes and ten seconds have elapsed. Throughout the first half, Jones had excellent protection. And he got excellent protection as he waited a while to throw that one. Again, Carr goes right. Dowdy comes to the near side. Second and ten. Colts at their own 35. They're out in the dust part of the diamond. Back to throw. The blitz is on. Fires a quick pass. The hook is caught by Carr.
does make his living doing his best. So if you like hard work and long hours, why don't you just come on down to the station and I'll start breaking you boys in. But before I do, tell me again how a marathon man makes his living. <laughs> There's nothing more gratifying than hard work, is it, boys? Uh, boys? That's what I think. Roger Carr, the third-year man out of Louisiana Tech, is really having himself an afternoon. He now has six receptions for 198 yards and three touchdowns. He ran 40 yards right down the middle after he caught that one. It appears that John Reeves is going to play. He has the helmet on. Kenny Anderson is standing over there by Coach Bill Johnson. But Lynn Hart will kick off, and the deep mentor Shelby and Elliott. So the Bengals trail again, 21 to 20. The Colts grabbed a 7 nothing lead. The Bengals came back to tie it up and have led since that time. Lynn Hart has a strange approach to that ball. He puts it high in the air. It'll be Elliott taking it at the 3. Then goes straight up to the 15 to the 20. Gets to about the 25-yard line, and after all, he got a good smack right over there and went down. Hit hard by Ray Oldham, and the Bengals will be starting out at their own 25. But John Reeves taking over his quarterback for Ken Anderson, who was really shaken up on a jarring tackle by Stan White near the end of the first half. And Anderson either has a mighty sore chest, collarbone, or perhaps neck. Well, the crowd really buzzing here as the Colts have taken a 21-20 lead goes left. To the near side comes Curtis. Fritz, the shallow man, Griffin, the deep man in the eye. John Reeves is the quarterback. First time in two regular season games now that Reeves has played. Fake back to throw. Sets up a screen to Griffin on the far side. Archie is up to the 29 to the 30 yard line maybe and that's about all. Jim Shyansky, the middle linebacker over there to make the stop. It's a five yard gain and the screen pass left to Griffin. And the Bengals will have a second and five. Shyansky was there and had a couple of helpers. They started out about at the 26, make it a four-yard gain, and call it second and six. The Colt crowd has really come to life as the Colts just took two minutes and 11 seconds to score. Curtis Farside, near side Brooks. Back split this time behind Reeves. Second and six. Reeves on a long count. Takes the ball, goes back to throw. Fires out in the flat. A flag is down. Brooks catches it and goes out of bounds at the 41. Lloyd Mumford was over there covering and pushed him out. The flag was thrown in the Bengals' backfield. Now the officials will gather to talk it over. Illegal procedure against the Bengals. Nobody had moved. They may not have had seven men up on the line of scrimmage. So it nullifies that gainer out to about the 40-yard line. And the penalty will move it back to the 25, and it'll become second and 11. That's the third illegal procedure penalty the Bengals have had in the afternoon. John Shinners comes in with a play. The announcement that Roger Carr has tied a cold touchdown record with his free touchdown pass. Bengals have scored on Casanova's interception, a pass from Anderson to Trumpy, and two Chris Barr field goals. Now the Bengals look at a second and 11. They have Brooks and Curtis Split. Cornerback's about seven yards off that line of scrimmage. Straight back to throw, and Reeves now fires upfield. Fritz has it at the 30. The 35, he's up to the 40 and gets to about the 44-yard line before Darrell Luce, the linebacker over on that side, can haul him down. Fritz was the safety valve. As Reeves dropped back, he just dumped it straight up over the line, and Fritz ran it all the way back out to the 44, a 19-yard gain and a first down. Kenny Anderson shaken up near the end of the first half. He is over on the far sideline, but John Reeves is taking over the quarterbacking duties. Reeves did it a couple of times last year. Led the Bengals to a win in the game against Houston when Anderson was sidelined. Now slot formation left with Curtis in the slot. The back split behind Reeves. Hand off. Griffin runs into his own blocker, Shinners, who is pulling and is knocked down behind the line of scrimmage. And then quickly pounced on by a Colt to down him. But he ran into Shinners. It's going to be a loss of a couple of yards on the play back to the 42. Shinners was pulling out to come out and pick a man up wide for Bujnak. And Archie either got there too quick or Bujnak didn't get away quick enough because it's a loss of two and now it'll be second and 12. Both lead at 21-20 here in the third quarter. We played about four and a half minutes. 
Curtis far side, Brooks split near side. And the Colts expecting pass here on second and 12. Reeves goes back to throw. Still looking, fires downfield. Oh, oh. The of Brooks who was open down at about the 35 yard line. Brooks stopped to come back and Reeves taking plenty of time overthrew him. Two Colts were trying quickly to get back there. He really had him, but Reeves overthrew him. So it comes back to the 42 and it becomes third and 12. He had the step that time, in fact, two or three steps on uh, both Lloyd Mumford, number 42, and on Darrell Luce, the linebacker, number 58, and those were two men who were trying to get back to uh, cover when they saw that Brooks was loose. Brooks is hooked and stopped. Now Pittsburgh leads Cleveland 24-14 to 14 in the fourth quarter. Third and 12, Bengals at their own 42. The Colts leave it up to that front four and drop everybody else back in that zone. Going back to throw is Reeves. He's hit from behind and dragged down by John Dutton. who circled around from his right end spot. You can't wait forever. Nobody got open downfield. Reeves finally was pinned down by Dutton. The first time a Bengal quarterback has been sacked this afternoon. is back up a 34 for a loss of eight. And that will bring Pat McAnally into punt. McAnally did not punt particularly well in the first half of the ball game. Two punts for just 35 yards. Now's the time when you really need a boomer. McCauley, Laird of the shallow man, Howard Stevens, the deep man. The line of scrimmage is the 34. McAnally gets off a terrible boot right off the side of his foot. It will bounce at the Colts 40 and then dribbles down to the 38. They thought it was out of bounds at the 43. A miserable punt by McAnally, and the Colts have excellent field position. Time out on the field. Score, Colts 21, Bengals 20. Okay, now, uh, Ann Ellen, get in just a little closer. I can't see you. I hate to have my picture taken. <laughs> you can understand why. Okay, now, everybody smile. You got any film in that camera? Yes, <laughs> I got any. Oh, I am out of film. <laughs> now, now, wait a minute. Everybody stay put. I'll pick up some film at convenience. Be right back. Oh. When you need something in a hurry, you can depend on Convenient Food Mart to make life a little more convenient. We make life a little more convenient. Oh. Driving a car is a lot easier if you know you have a service station you can rely on. Polymer Zephyr Service Station is that station. They're located across from Henderson County Middle School, and they're open 24 hours a day except Sunday night. Jimmy Triplett and Charlie Kane are co-managers, and they believe in the service. They'll clean your windshield and check your oil every time. Polymer Zephyr Station, across from Henderson County Middle School. Union Center will be there, even if you're not. The report from the Cincinnati fans is that Kenny Anderson was only shaken up. He could have come back into play, but the Cincinnati Brain Trust decided that John Reeves should come in and do it. So the Colts start at the 37 after only a 28-yard boot by McAnally. Burt Jones hands off Lydell Mitchell on a sweep to the right. He's going to get a couple of yards, and that's about all. Maybe not even that much. Over there quickly, Bob Brown. Brown's trailing the play over there, and Brown gets up with that infield dirt all over his uniform. It's a gain of only a yard on the play. And the Bengals are really restricted the Colts' running game to... Philadelphia 28-7 to over the Giants. That's the final, and here's a real surprise. In the fourth quarter, the New England Patriots now lead the Miami Dolphins 30-14. to Pittsburgh Steelers lead Cleveland 24-14 to in the fourth quarter. The second and nine for the Colts at the 38. They bring out Roger Carr to the left, bring Dowdy out to the right. Backs in an eye. Hand off a flag on the play. Dowdy was going forward, plunging straight up the middle of the ball as Lydell Mitchell. Dowdy was going forward toward the line of scrimmage when the ball was snapped. I don't know whether they decided to bring him out in motion or what, but he forgot momentarily what the situation should be, and it's an illegal motion against the Baltimore Colts, that'll cost him five, move him back to the 33, and it'll be second and 14. Kenny Anderson is standing over the sidelines. The report was he was just shaken up. John Reeves, the start of the second half, and of course we don't know if Anderson will play or not. against Glenn Dowdy, as we said. So it'll be second and 14 for the Colts back at the 33. Yeah. 
clock is stopped with 8 minutes, 58 seconds to go here in the third quarter at Baltimore. The Colts lead the Bengals by 1 point, 21 to 20. Now the backs are split in the second and 14 situation. Burt Jones goes back to throw. Looks, fires down the middle. A dive, and Dottie can't hold on to it. Down at the Bengals, 43. He did a deep slant in. Kenny Riley was covering him there. But Dottie discussed it with himself. He had his hands on the ball down about knee high, but could not hold on to it. So again, Burt Jones had ample protection. And it comes back to the 33, and now it'll be third and 14. You know, when that L.A. takes on Minnesota in just a few minutes, though, that game should get underway. Jim Marshall will tie George Blanda's record of having competed in 224 straight games. He has not missed a game for 17 years. As an amazing guy. Ron Carpenter has gone out this time, and Bill Kohler has replaced him, so Bob Brown stays in. Burt Jones goes back to throw. He's going to be flushed out of the pocket this time, running upfield, looks and is knocked down, way back at the 23-yard line by Kenny Johnson. He got him from behind, and Burt Jones is shaken up a little bit now. Kenny Johnson hit Jones from behind. He came down back at about the 23. So Jones is gingerly up on his feet, so David Lee will go into boot. It's a loss of 10 in the play. He was running away from Kenny Johnson, but Johnson circling around from behind got him just when it looked as though he might want to unload that ball and throw it. So David Lee will boot to Willie Shelby and Lamar Perrys with Marvin Cobb, the short man. Colts lead it 21-20. We're still not quite midway through this third period. There's the snap back to Lee. Gets the kick away. This one is not particularly long. Let it bounce at the Bengals' 45-yard line. It just drops dead right about there. Rolls down to maybe the 43. Marvin Cobb really hustled to get out of the way. Let's pause 15 seconds for station identification. This is the Cincinnati Bengals Football Network. And you're listening to exciting Cincinnati Bengals football right here on Radio 86, WSON Henderson, your spot for sports. Bengals have a first and 10 at their own 43. Reeves and a quarterback again. Brooks and Curtis both split. Now Curtis goes in motion to the line of scrimmage and stops. The handoff. Glenville Elliott around the outside gets to the 45 and knocked down in front of the Colts bench at about the 47-yard line. Curtis in motion on that side toward the line of scrimmage. Stopped, of course, and the ball was snapped, and then he's one of the blockers on that side. Glenville Elliott got it out to the 48-yard line. It's a gain of about five. Joe Ehrman was the man who got over to finally knock Elliott down, and it's second and five. In the first half of the ball game, Archie Griffin carried six times for 17 yards. Mitchell was the leading ball carrier for Baltimore, nine carries for 40. But they only had seven other yards rushing in addition to those 40. The Bengals were the second and five at their own 48. Slot formation, both wide men to the left. Reeves fakes the handoff, goes back to throw, fires down the middle, incomplete. It was intended down there for Curtis. Jackie Wattles came up in the safety spot, almost intercepted the ball. Got there about the same time as Curtis did, a good play. The ball going to have to be a little thrown a little bit quicker just as Curtis makes his cut. So at the 48, it will become third and five. Wallace, who intercepted three passes last week against New England, came out of that confrontation holding his both hands in the air, shaking his head. He thought he should have had it. Coslett and Myers have gone into the ball game now. The Bengals go with a couple of tight ends. Reeves back to throw. Fires downfield. It's incomplete. Reeves was hit just as he unloaded that ball. It went away from the intended receiver. Joe Ehrman hit him just as he got rid of the ball. And the Colts defensive unit has stopped the Bengals again. And McAnally will have to go into boot. Colts lead 21-20. We've got 8.09 left here in the third period. He's gained by both clubs in that first half. Bengals had 237, and the Colts had 211. So McAnally, coming off just a poor 28-yard boot, will try again. There's the snap. This is a good high spiral over toward the far side of the field. Stevens will let a bounce, and it goes out of bounds at about the five-yard line. Kicked it away from Stevens. That was the beauty. 47 yards out of bounds on the five. Time out on the field. Score Colts 21, Bengals 20. Right now is a great time to see your Chevy dealer. 
Because right now, a lot of Chevrolet dealers are having their garage sale on 1976 Chevrolets. They have to make room for the 77 Chevrolets that will be coming in this fall. So right now, a lot of Chevy dealers are having their garage sale on 76 models. What it all means is that you'll likely get just about the best deals you can get on some of the best cars and trucks you can get. Chevrolets. You'll find a variety of models to choose from. Sporty Monza 2 Plus 2s. Dressy Monza Town Coupes. Tough Chevy Vegas. Chevettes. Plus bigger size Monte Carlos. Chevelles and Impalas. You'll likely find great deals on all those great cars and trucks at your Chevy dealers right now. Why? Because when your Chevy dealer has a garage sale, it's that get a great deal on a Chevy time of year. So see your Chevy dealer for a great deal on a brand new 1976 Chevrolet. And do it today. Three games in the National Conference are now final. The Washington Redskins beat the Seattle Seahawks 31 to 7. The Philadelphia Eagles over the New York Giants 20 to 7. And the Detroit Lions down the Atlanta Falcons by a score of 24 to 10. That's the ninth straight win for Detroit over Atlanta. Well, the Colts will be starting out at their own five-yard line now. Burt Jones, who was shaken up slightly on that last series, is in there. Hand off, it's Lydell Mitchell over right tackle. He's got about four as he comes out of the nine-yard line. Bob Brown dragged him down. Long, I believe, with Carpenter. Got it out to about the nine-yard line, so it'll be second and six. The Bengals will be home next Sunday to play the Green Bay Packers. Two weeks from today, they'll be at Cleveland to take on the Browns, who are putting up a stubborn battle this afternoon against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Steelers led 17-14 in the third quarter, or fourth quarter. Second and six, Colts at their own nine. And off again as Lydell Mitchell tries to tiptoe his way in, and he gets to the 10-yard line through the right side, and that's about all. All kinds of Bengals are around there to greet him. Bob Brown, Ron Carpenter, three or four others, Kenny Johnson, the left end. Gain out to the 12-yard line, got three in the play, so it bring up a third down and three yards to go for the first down. And the team the Bengals face next Sunday back at Riverfront Stadium, the Green Bay Packers, in the third quarter this afternoon, are losing to the St. Louis Cardinals 12 to nothing. So Carr has been the real thorn in the side of the Bengals, comes out to the near side, the far side is Dowdy, third and three. Jones with the ball back to throw. Looks, fires out in the flat. Intercepted by Pritchard. He has it and is out of bounds at about the 10-yard line. Cut right in front of Glenn Dowdy and picked off that pass. Ron Pritchard really picked up Dowdy swinging out into that, or Lydell Mitchell swinging out into that left flat and just stepped right in front of him at the 14-yard line and picked it away. And the Bengals are in superb field condition. What more can you say? Great play by Pritchard, who really hugged Mitchell. A great turn of events, wondering if on third and three if the Colts would try the pass. They did, and it's the third one that's been intercepted. Both wide men to the right side. John Reeves, the quarterback, gives it off to Fritz. Fritz head down, fights his way down maybe to the 11 for about three hard-fought yards mm. through the right side. Ran right over Lapham and Holland on that right side. There were all kinds of Colts around in on the tackle. Last man up off the stack is Mike Barnes, who is the left tackle. Putting the ball down just shy of the 11-yard line, it will be second and seven. Bengals trail by one, 21 to 20. Here in the third quarter, we're just a little over halfway through. Chip Meyer swings out wide to the left. He's replaced Bill Brooks. Ike Curtis comes out to the right. Strong side right formation. The back split in behind Reeves. And off, Fritz up the middle, fights his way down to the eight. As he got about three more yards, Joe Ehrman, the right tackle, was the man who made the stop on Fritz down at the eight. And now it'll bring up a third down and about four yards to go for the first down. Well, they put the ball right down at the nine-yard line. So make it third down now and about five yards to go for the first down. And this is where those yards become extremely difficult to get. No matter how you try and get them, inside, outside, through the air, they're all tough to get crowd noisy down at that end of the field. See if the Bengals will go to the air and try and get the touchdown. 
John Reeves goes back to throw. Look, fires down at the two-yard line. is complete and going out of the end zone for the touchdown is Linville Elliott, who came out of the backfield. Jim Shiansky was there to drag him down, but Reeves hit Elliott for a nine-yard touchdown pass, and that puts the Bengals out on top again now by a score of 26 to 21. And Jim, I certainly didn't expect it to be an offensive battle like this. Two good defensive ball clubs, but we've had a lot of points scored. Yes, we have. And the, we still have 15, 20, we still have 20 minutes and 11 seconds to go. Five minutes, 11 seconds this period, 15 minutes in the fourth period. Pitcher's interception set it up at the 14. There's the extra point attempt by Barr. It is up and it's right on through. So there's time out on the field. Score now, Bengals 27, the Colts 21. Street Deli is the delicatessen in downtown Henderson with delicious meat, cheeses, salads, and desserts. And now Corkscrew's Deli is serving beer. That's right, good cold beer. There are many sandwiches to choose from. Roast beef, corned beef, ham, pastrami, turkey, salami, pepper beef, kielbasi, all beef bologna, all beef kosher hot dogs, cheese and crackers, Reuben, or hoagie. Add one of seven different cheeses to your sandwich and enjoy it on your own choice of bread. There are four different breads, too, plus bagels. Corkscrew's Deli has soup and salads also, plus party trays and catering service. Eat in or carry out at Corkscrew's Deli. They're open Monday through Thursday from 11 to 6, Friday 11 to 8, and Saturday 11 to 4. Enjoy real delicatessen food at Corkscrew's Deli, 103 North Main in downtown Henderson. Chris Barr kicked that ball about four yards deep into the end zone, and Bruce Laird elected not to return it, so it comes out to the 20. And the Colts, who scored just two minutes and 11 seconds into this third period, now find themselves trailing 27 to 21. Double wing back formation. Jones rolling out to his right, goes back to throw. Fires up, field incomplete, and almost intercepted again. A Bengal was the closest man to it as one of the linebackers. Let's see which one it is, Bo Harris. And that ball may have hit Harris so hard in the numbers that it about obliterated him because it was right into his chest. Another former LSU man going after Burt Jones passes. It's like old home we got there with Tommy Casanova and Burt Jones and Bo Harris. But all that camaraderie that may exist uh, between these players before the game is forgotten once that whistle blows. Raymond Chester, the tight end, probably was the intended pass receiver. Dowdy goes out to the right side now, and Roger Carr comes left. Bengals back on top, 27-21. Burt Jones back to throw. Out on the flat, it's incomplete. Sent it out there for Lydell Mitchell, and Kenny Anderson really cut it, or rather Kenny Riley, really cut his legs out from under him, and Lydell Mitchell a little slow getting up. But he's up on his feet. That pass was way high, and that le really leaves the pass receiver in a most vulnerable position when he goes high up into the air and Roddy just undercut him and knocked him flat. So back at the 20 now quickly it becomes third and 10. Ron Pritchard's interception set it up at the 14 yard line and on a third and five play John Reeves hit Lenville Elliott. So again Burt Jones goes back to throw. Looks, fires up field, it's incomplete, intended for Carr, who is running toward the sidelines at about the 42. Pritchard had dropped back to cover him, and Kenny Rowdy was over there too, so they were giving, they were giving Roger Carr double coverage on that one, but the Bengals stopped him three times back at the 20, and now David Lee will have to boot. You don't think of a linebacker being able to move uh, quite that swift, but uh, Ron Pritchard, O'Bell, and Ken Rowdy both, particularly Pritchard, was uh, step for step with Carr that time. Roddy was pretty much one-on-one -on -one with him in the first half, and Carr caught a couple. Let's see if the Bengals continue to do that. Shelby and Perry through the deep man. A snap is high, but Lee jumps and comes down with it. And then gets off a good driving spiral. Perry will take the Bengals 28. He's up to the 30. He loses a couple of men and goes down at about the 38. And a Bengal player is hurting down on the field. Reggie Williams, but he's getting up, and Reggie was shaken up on that play. Forrest Blue... Down there to make the stop, but the Bengals have good field position out at their 39. David Lee really had to jump to get that high pass from center. But then he really drilled the ball all the way back to the Bengals' 29. That was about a 51-yard boot. 
Bengals lead it 27-21 in one whale of a football game here at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. Elliott and Fritz are the running backs, and Brooks and Curtis are split. Now Curtis comes in motion. Hand off into the line goes Fritz, and he fights his way forward for about three or four yards and is stopped standing up and pushed back by Fred Cook. But his penetration carried him up over the 41 to perhaps the 42-yard line, a gain of about three as he sliced in between guard and right tackle. At the 41, a couple of yards, then literally second and eight. Three games are now final in the AFC. The Pittsburgh Steelers... 31, Cleveland Browns 14, the Oilers over the Buffalo Bills 13 to 3, and the San Diego Chargers blank the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 23 to nothing. Okay, slot formation right, Brooks wide, Curtis in the slot, Bengals with a second and eight at their own 41, Reeves fakes and goes back to throw, looks now is going to be hit, too long again going downfield, Curtis and Brooks were both covered, nailed by Joe Herman back at the 34 yard line for a loss of seven. Reeves had time, and time, and a little more time, but finally it closed down. They're going to be at the 35-yard line, and that is about the fifth time this afternoon the Bengal quarterbacks have been dropped. So it'll bring up a third down situation now, and about 14 yards to go. The Bengals go with three wide receivers now, only one running back. Brooks, Curtis, Myers, and McDaniel are all in the ball game. Back to throw is Reeves. Brooks fires out in the flat over the head of Ike Curtis. Would have been a first down to midfield, but Reeves threw the ball too high. And will send McAnally in to boot. Last time McAnally really drilled one. They went out of bounds at the Colts five-yard line. The line of scrimmage is the Bengals 35. This one was a 47-yarder. McAnally only averaged 35 yards in the first half. Snap back from center is a good one. McAnally gets a oh. good high spiral away over the far side. Stevens rotates, takes the ball and is hit immediately at the 19. Right down to cover him was Melvin Morgan. And he no sooner had that ball than Morgan, the rookie from Mississippi Valley, was right in there on top of him and dropped him right about at the 19 or 20-yard line. So that was a 45-yard boot by McAnally. It was away from Stevens. He had to drift off to his right to pull it down. So right at the 20, the Colts will start out again there. First and 10, just as they did in the last series. Bengals have a 27-21 lead. And again, it's all the Colts come right out and score in the first series. The second half to take a 21-20 lead. Backs are in an eye. Dowdy and Carr are split on both sides. Now Dowdy comes in motion. And a quick pitch around the left side comes Lydell Mitchell. He gets up over the 25 to about the 27-yard line before Kenny Riley can bring him down. Yet a wave of interference out in front of him on its sweep left. Dowdy, who was going in motion toward the line of scrimmage, stopped and was also part of the interference, just as Ike Curtis is on the same particular play for the Bengals. It was a seven-yard pickup, and it'll be second and three. And as the play was whistled dead, David Taylor, who was uh, leading up in front and throwing, trying to throw a downfield block, Taylor and Tommy Casanova were exchanging dirty glances and a few elbows. Split this time back behind, and Bob Brown jumped across but got back. Into the line goes Mitchell. He squeezed through and got out to the 30. All of a sudden, he came out of nowhere. He was pinched in there by Bob Brown and Ron Carpenter, but he came out of the stack and made it out to the 30-yard line and has the first down. It looked as though he were stopped. I think Brown and Carpenter are trying to figure out how he got away. The ball is just up over the 30, and it is the first down. Bob Brown jumped across the line of scrimmage fairly far, but didn't make contact and managed to get back, and the play ran right there. Again, Dowdy comes in motion to the near side, and Burt Jones goes back to throw. Now he's being chased, gets away from one man, coming, runs up to the 35, Pritchard hits him a fumble, and is kicked into the backfield, and now Kenny Roddy is going to fall out and will have it. Oh, Pritchard really banged Burt Jones and separated him from the ball, and then somebody kicked it, and Kenny Riley, instead of trying to pick it up, just decided to be safe and fell on the ball at the Bengals' 47-yard line. 
Well, Burt Jones lost that ball immediately when he was hit by Pritchard. And that ball really flew around, and finally Riley recovered at the 47-yard line. Wow, we've had a lot of action, Jim, in this Boy. ball game of all types this afternoon. I tell you, Burt Jones has to know that he got popped and got popped good that time because Ron Pritchard put every bit of what he's got into it. The Bengals start out at their own 48-yard line. Fake back to throw. Quick slam down the middle. Myers dropped it at the 40, and there was no one near him. Right into Chip's hands, and you won't see that very often. The cornerback over there, Nelson Munsey, had fallen down. Oh, that would have been a big gainer. That would have been all the way down to the Colts' 30-yard line or so, but Chip couldn't hold on to it. And it becomes second and 10 at the 48, and he was really disgusted with himself. And as you say, that's not the kind of thing you see happen very often with Chip Myers. We've talked about his maturity, his experience, uh, the being Mr. Clutch. That doesn't happen too often. Split in behind. John Reeves this time. Curtis split out to the right side. Hand off into the line goes Elliott. He comes up over the 50 and down into cold territory at about the 47-yard line. Gained about five on that play in through the left side. Big Mike Barnes was a man along with Dutton who dragged him down. Call it a five-yard gain at the Colts 47, and it will be third and five. Reeves has completed three out of eight for 32 yards. Clock down to a minute 17 here in the third quarter. Slot formation right with Myers in the slot. Wide is Bill Brooks. Now Myers, or Curtis, goes in motion over the far side of the field. Reeves goes back to throw. Pass is deflected, intercepted by a lineman. John Duffy's knocked down at the 42. No, oh, it's Fred Cook. They tried to set up a screen pass out on the right side. It was knocked up in the air, and Fred Cook came down with the ball at the Bengals' 43. So they get it back on an interception after the Bengals had recovered the ball on a fumble, and a close in business at the Bengals' 43. the Bengals defense will get the stern call. The 27-21 ball game. The Bengals out in front. A minute and three seconds left in the third quarter. Dowdy and Roger Carr are split. Beeks and Mitchell are the running back. They're in an eye. <clears throat> Handoff goes to the second man, Mitchell, and he gets maybe a couple of yards as he tries the right side. Ron Pritchard was right there, really knocked his feet right out from under him. Gets a handshake from Coy Bacon. A gain of a couple of yards on the play to the 41. Well, he give him only one, they say. Now, actually, it's closer to a two-yard gain for statistical purposes. It is. We'll call it second and eight. Down in the about 30 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Bengals lead at 27-21. The Bengals got it on a fumble. Colts get it right back on an interception. Now they send Lydell Mitchell in motion over to the right side. Burt Jones goes back to throw, looks, fires off, and a flat is cut on the 30-yard line, down to the 25. Bernard Jackson after him. Tommy Casanova will finally haul him out of bounds inside the stand about the eight. It was Dowdy, the wide receiver, spun away from the man well out into the field and got it all the way down to the eight-yard line. Good bit of running by Mitchell after he caught the pass. And it will be first and goal. Finally by Casanova after he eluded Riley and Jackson. The ball just inside the nine. First and goal for the Colts. They send Roger Carr out to the right. Put Lydell Mitchell on the wing and Leakes directly in behind Burt Jones. Quick pitch around the right side. Leakes gets to the five-yard line and is going to be shoved back by about three or four Bengals. They gained about four on the play. A sweep with everybody out in front leading the way. Carpenter, Casanova, and Kenny Johnson all over there. And we've come to the end of the third quarter. The score, the Bengals 27, the Colts 21. When you get the urge to know what you've got to do, you've got to satisfy that
are getting the burger urge every day. They know a beer isn't good just because it looks good on big TV spectaculars. It has to taste good, like burger, zingier, fresher, better tasting. Unfool yourself. Get the burger urge. Get Brewing Company, Cincinnati, Ohio. This is Jimmy Crum along with Phil Sam back at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. Starting the final 15 minutes of play, the Bengals leading by a score of 27 to 21. But that, dear friends, is subject to change. Because right now, the Baltimore Colts have the ball, second down, goal to go, at the Bengals' five-yard line. We have had enough action here in one game this afternoon to cover four or five games. These fans, uh, when they traded ends of the field, when they came back down to our right, the fans gave these Baltimore Colts a standing ovation. So here we go. Second and goal about five and a half yards away. Roger Cole goes out, or Carr goes out to the left, bring Dowdy out to the right. Burt Jones, the quarterback, gives the handoff into the line, Lydell Mitchell, he's all the way down to about the one yard line as he rolled in over that right side. Running hard, Kenny Johnson there on the tackle. There were about three other Bengals helping drag him down. Lydell Mitchell, just a straight slant and over tackle. Now they'll bring two tight ends and bring McCauley in to replace Mitchell. The ball is just inside the two-yard line. It'll be third and goal. Now the Bengals' defense will really be called on. Burt Jones signals for quiet as they come out of the huddle. Got McCauley and Roosevelt Leakes in behind him. Hand off into the line, in for a touchdown. Both Roosevelt Leakes, a big hole opened up on the left side of the goal line, over the right side of the Bengals line. They went in for the touchdown that ties it up. Roosevelt Leakes, two yards one. And in the seesaw game, the Colts tie it up again. Some kind of offensive football game this afternoon. Bengals led 20 to 14 at the half. Colts this time moved five or 43 yards in five plays. The pass interception set it up. The kick by Linhart is up and it's good. That puts the Colts out in front. So there's time out on the field to score Colts 28, Bengals 27. Quick Pick is never too far away at all. Quick Pick is located in Henderson on US 60 East, just past the Marathon service station. Open 24 hours a day, Quick Pick is the perfect place to shop for any last-minute item you may need. Remember, Quick Pick is never too far away. US 60 East in Henderson. Quick Pick, never too far away. your insurance needs, see an independent insurance agent of Henderson. The independent insurance agents of Henderson, Kentucky take pride in caring about the needs of the community. Call a member agency for your insurance. Members are E.J. Mabry Insurance, Collier and Lackey, Atkins and Stanley, Star Thompson and Bird, Causey Springer, Hunt Dixon, and Royster and Lambert. They're the independent insurance agents of Henderson. They'll be glad to serve you. In the last two minutes of that third quarter, we had all sorts of uh, activity with about a minute 50 to go. Burt Jones fumbled, Cincinnati recovered. With about a minute three to go, Fred Cook intercepted John Reeves' pass. And then 14 minutes and 14 seconds, just about uh, 40 seconds into the fourth quarter, the Colts score. Linhart's kick over the far side of the field. It'll be Willie Shelby at the three. Shelby comes straight out to the 10, to the 15, to the 20, breaks away at the 30. At the 35-40, 43-yard line, and a flag is down as the Colts are all over Shelby out there. A flag is down, and let's see whether it's going to be a grabbing the face mask or what it may be. Schinner is indicating a personal foul called against the Baltimore Colts. Willie Shelby burst into a hole, and there were just a couple of men back there. Tony Linhart, the man who kicked off, was one of those who slowed him up. 
The flag threw right into melee, and it's going to be a 15-yard walk-off against the Colts, taken from the Bengals' 43 all the way down to the Colts' 41-yard line. Personal foul of some type. Just a personal foul, that's it. No further delineation. Somebody in there with a shot of some kind. So the Bengals in great field position down at the Colts' 41-yard line. Personal foul was against Sanders' driver. Curtis and Myers are the wide receivers. This stadium noisy at the live. Let's see what John Reeves does on play number one. Reeves going back to pass. Looks. Fires down the middle. Curtis, or Trumpy, can't hold on to it. Trumpy was alone. He had curled down there at the 25, and Reeves just threw the ball off the mark. Would have been a quick first down. So it comes back to the 41, and it will be second and 10. Now there's a penalty flag down, and this one's against Cincinnati. It looks like a long one. Well, the Bengals are only moving back enough to indicate that it might be a five-yard play. Let's see if the Colts will decline it. Now it is going to be at the 10-yard penalty, apparently holding. Let's get the signal right here. Dave Lapham. Illegal use of the hands is the call, and that puts the ball back, as they would say, up in Canada to 51. <laughs> it's at the Bengals' 49-yard line, and it will be first down and 20. Curtis Myers both split on opposite sides. Reeves with the ball, drops back to throw. Reeves looking. Now he's going to be hit and dropped back at about the 43. Couldn't find anybody. Tried to run, and John Dutton got him from behind, and Reeves goes down again. Knocked down about three or four times here in this second half. It's second and 25, back of the Bengals, 44. Reeves with the ball, gives off in a draw play, straight up the middle, all the way down into cold territory at about the 47 or 48 yard line comes Lenville Elliott. Joe Ehrman finally hauled him down. It's going to be the Colts 48, so the play is good for about eight yards. And now it'll be third down and about 17. Bengal quarterbacks have been sacked about a half a dozen times this afternoon. Chris Barr kicked a 52-yard field goal near the end of the first half, but this is beyond field goal range now. Bengals trailed in the ball game by one, 28 to 27. Both Myers and Curtis lined up on the near side. Fake back to throw. Reeves fires down the middle. A dive, and Myers comes up with the ball at the 28-yard line. No, oh, they say he trapped it. Now the Colts are arguing. Let's see, what did they rule? No, oh, they did rule no catch. They say Myers trapped the ball in a dive. So it will come back to the 48-yard line, and McAnally will have to go into boot. linebacker back there, Stan White, and Reeves had to throw the ball far enough in front of him to elude him, and Myers had to dive, and they say he trapped. So McAnally will punt with a line of scrimmage to Colt 48. Snap back to center. McAnally gets a boomer away that he aims for the coffin corner, and it goes way on back into the end zone. In fact, lands beyond the end line, so it'll come out to the 20. There's time out of the field. Score, Colt 28, Bengals 27. Looking for. 
Bengals have to hold the Colts down here in their own territory and try to get that ball back again. Twelve and a half minutes to go as the Colts start out at their own 20. Dowdy and Carr both wide, Mitchell and Leach are the running backs. Hand off comes to Lydell Mitchell, tries the left side, and he's knocked down at about the 22. A slicing tackle from the outside by Bo Harris, the left side linebacker. Harris sliced in and hit him right at the 20. And Leach's forward momentum carried him two more yards out to the 22. And it'll be second and eight. A good defensive play by Harris. LSU men have been a big factor in this ball game this afternoon. Burt Jones, the Colt quarterback from there. Casanova intercepted one of his passes and ran it back 31 yards for a touchdown. Now the backs are in an eye. Second and eight Colts at their own 22. Hand off. Lydell Mitchell breaks out to the 30, to the 33-yard line where Casanova and LeClaire finally wrestle him down at the 37. Came in through the Bengals' left side again that time. Jerry Burley has not played at all today and regular action for the Bengals because of that sprained ankle. He's only about 85%. He's one of the Bengals' better pass rushers. That's hurting in that department. It's a quick gain of 16 for Mitchell. The Colts have a first down. Kenny Anderson over on the far sideline is warming up once again. He's back behind the bench warming up with Billy Brooks. Casanova may have been shaken up a little bit on that play. Marvin Cobb has gone in at the strong safety spot. Comes over to left where they line up with a tight right formation. Hand off, it's Lydell Mitchell, and he gets maybe a couple of yards as he tries the right side. Bo Harris was again there in to upend him along with Bob Brown, and as he catapulted out of that group, Jim LeClaire pinned him right down at the 40. So as they did on the preceding series of plays, gain two on the first down and have a second and eight. Kenny Anderson is warming up over behind the Bengals bench. Anderson took a real shot in the upper chest or throat near the end of the first half and was really shaken up. Casanova being administered to by Dr. Blue, trainer Meyer Pollard, second and eight, Colts out at their own 40. Burt Jones with the ball, hands off to Lydell Mitchell. He's knocked down by Ron Carpenter behind the line of scrimmage. Carpenter came booming through there and knocked his feet out from under him for a loss of a yard or two. Make it one back at the 39, and now it will be third and nine. Sterling defensive play by Ron Carpenter. Bob Brown was there to pounce right on him. Cardinals lead the Packers 15 to nothing now in the third quarter. After spotting Cleveland 14 points, the Steelers came roaring back for a 31 to 14 victory. Rams and Vikings are scoreless in the second period. Third and nine, Burt Jones back to throw. Looks, fires up the middle, a dive and a catch out at the 48 yard line by Lydell Mitchell. And I believe that it was going to be short of what he needed for a first down. It all depends on where they spot the ball. They put it down and the crowd doesn't like it. They're going to bring in the chains to measure. Pritchard was with Mitchell, but Burt Jones really threw a bullseye and Jones really stood in amongst good pressure that time. So the chains have to come across all the way from the far side of the field. It's going to be very, very close. From here, Phil, it looks like it might be just inches short, but we'll wait until they pull the sticks down to see. It is not. It is a first down. Well, a big third and nine play, and the Colts made it. Rather, a third and 11. So the Colts are out at their own 48-yard line now. Bengals have lost the opportunity to hold them deep and force them from punt well back in their territory. Roger Carr on the far side. Near side, Dowdy. Carr has caught three touchdown passes. Hand off, Mitchell tries the right side and spins up to midfield. And that is all. Again, it's Bo Harris cutting in from that left side linebacking spot to knock him down. Got help from a couple of others. Ron Carpenter was there along with LeClaire. It was a two-yard gain. So for the third time in the series on first down, they pick up two yards on the first down play and have a second and eight. The ball right at midfield. Colts lead it 28-27 to 27 with nine minutes and a handful of seconds. Now just nine minutes remaining. Carr and Dowdy again split, this time on opposite sides of the field. Backs are in an eye behind Burt Jones. Gives the second man, Mitchell. He's through for about five, eight, nine yards all the way down to the Bengals' 41-yard line. <laughs> Broke a couple of tackles in route. Bonnie Bernard Jackson pulled him down from a free safety spot. They're going to stay at the Bengals' 42-yard line. And he's got the first down at 42 needed eight and made it 
So the Colts holding on to the football, running off precious time on that clock. 28-27, they hold a one-point lead. 50,374 fans in attendance here this afternoon at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. So we're ready to go. The handoff this time to Mitchell. He's hit from behind, but his momentum carries him up down inside the 40 to about the 38-yard line. Ron Pritchard was the man who made the tackle on him. They'll put it at the 38-yard line, so he made about four on this play, and it'll be second and six. Good blocking by the Colts' offensive line. David Taylor and George Coons, the tackles. Robert Pratt and Elmer Collett, the guards, and Ken Mendenhall, the center. Ball in the dirt part of the infield at the 38, second and six Colts. They lead by one. And they split both wide receivers. This time, Burt Jones goes back to throw, and he's going to be hit and dragged down back at the 49-yard line by Coy Bacon, who got him for the second time. Bacon was right in on Jones immediately and threw him all the way back at the Bengals' 49-yard line, a loss of about 11 yards on the play. We're going to put it at the 48-yard line, so make it a loss of 10, and it'll bring up third and 16. Jones drifted that way, and all of a sudden, Bacon was right in front of his face. Then he tried to reverse field and go back the other way, but Bacon got hold of his jersey and dragged him down. Lydell Mitchell is over the 100-yard mark in rushing, 24 carries for 102. A little over four yards a pop. Here's a big third down play, and the Bengals have got to hold and get their hands back on the ball. 7.15 remains. That double wing formation. Only McCauley is in behind Burt Jones, and Jones goes back to throw. Looks, fires down the middle, it's caught down at the 32-yard line. It may be a first down. Caught down there by Glenn Dowdy. Lamar Perry shot him to drag him down. Let's see whether they have the first down or not. Very close. That's twice now on big third down plays that uh, Burt Jones has looked to a spot, almost knowing exactly where he wants to put that ball the last time he had the first down just by inches. And it's going to be just as close this time. They're bringing in the yard markers from the far side of the field. This time, I believe, it's going to be a wee bit short. It is by a couple of inches. not sent in their punter, so I guess the Colts are going for it. The ball is down at the Bengals 32, and Burt Jones on two big third down situations is hit clutch passes. It's going to be fourth in just a couple of inches. Don McCauley in the backfield with Roosevelt Leakes. Let's see if Burt Jones will keep and just try to drive, dive over the heap. Into the line, he got the first down. It's McCauley, he's down at the 30. Got a couple of yards on the play, and that will be a cold first down. It'll enable him to hold on to the ball. 6.41 is the time remaining, and they're really chewing up the clock. The Bengals have had the ball for just one series here in this fourth quarter. The Colts have held the ball for almost six minutes now here in this, uh, this drive. They took it over with 12.31 to go back on their own 20-yard line. They're going to measure it. Doesn't look like it's even close. And we now have 6.41 remaining, and the clock stopped. It isn't even close. It's a good yard over. I don't know why they brought the chains in. Big third down clutch pass to Glenn Dowdy, the former Michigan tailback, who is a wide receiver here. Burt Jones has hit 14 for 29 this afternoon. He has been intercepted three times. 14 for 29 for 302 yards. Dowdy and Carr split out. The Bengals are really going to have to dig in and hold here quickly. And get their hands back on the ball. Dowdy comes in motion. Look for him to run that way. They do. Running out the left side is Mitchell. Reggie Williams hits him, and then he's really put down for good by LeClaire. Reggie Williams is in the linebacking spot now, number 57, a rookie from Dartmouth. They've got four linebackers in there. No, LeClaire is out. No, LeClaire is in. Bo Harris is in. He may have replaced Ron Pritchard. The ball is right at the 30. There is no gain on that wide sweep to the left, and it becomes second and 10. Reggie Williams has replaced Pritchard. I don't know if Pritchard was shaken up or what the situation may be. Wide men both ways. Burt Jones with the ball, hands off. Mitchell around the outside, and he's got nothing. Ron Carpenter 
grabbed hold of his jersey, and then Marvin Cobb was there to pin him down for good. He got nothing at all. So now Burt Jones looks at another big third down play. This is third and ten. So Roosevelt Leakes comes out, and McCauley goes in. Colts lead it 28-27, clock running 5-14, time remaining. It's going to be interesting, Phil, to see what Jones goes through this time. This is the third big third down play he's looked at. Third and 16 the last time. Prior to that, it was third and nine. Mitchell comes in motion off the right. Both wide receivers to the left. Jones goes back to throw. He's being chased. Now he's going to run at the 30 and goes out of bounds at about the 28. Reggie Williams came over there to force him out of bounds. Now it'll be fourth down, and they'll have about seven yards to go for the first down. He made just uh, two yards on the play, and that is all. In goes Tony Linhart. The field goal, man, it will be about a 46-yard attempt. Both lead by one. They're trying to up the lead to four to put the Bengals in position where they'd have to have a touchdown. The ball will be spotted just over the 35. Call it 36, a 46-yard attempt. Ball to snap back. There's the kick. It is blocked. And is picked up by a call who loses it. Now everybody scrambles for it. And the Bengals will have it at about the 36-yard line. Somebody in the middle of the line blocked that ball. The Bengals have four minutes and 42 seconds to do something about the situation as it now stands. When time is back in, they will have the ball first and ten at their own 36-yard line. They trail by one point, 28-27. Four minutes and 42 seconds in which to put some points on the board. Kenny Anderson back in a quarterback now for the first time in his second half. Slot formation out to the right side. Running backs, Elliott and Fritz. Fake into the line goes Elliott, and he has got nothing. He's going to be stopped right there at the 36-yard line, standing up as they tried that delay handoff. Joe Ehrman there to drag him down. Four and a half minutes is the time showing on the clock. There was no gain on the play, and it'll be second and ten. Kenny Anderson shaken up by that blow from Stan White here at the end of the first half. Is in now for the first time in the second half. Had been replaced by John Reeves. Reeves hit three out of ten. Won a touchdown pass, nine yards to Linville Elliott. Now Ike Curtis comes in motion over to the near side. Anderson with the ball, goes back to throw. Looking, fires on the flat, caught by Fritz. At the 40, the 45 and out of bounds at about the Bengals 49-yard line and has the first down. The ball is going to be right out of midfield. It's good for about 14 yards. The Bengals have got to work it down far enough to get that field goal shot at the very least. They trail by 1, 28-27, and we're just under four minutes. The clock stops as Fritz was knocked out of bounds from the far side of the field. The ball is at the Colts 50, or rather at the 50-yard line. It belongs to both of them. First and 10. Brooks near side, Curtis far side. Anderson fakes, back to throw, a quick slant, incomplete. Brooks was hit just as the ball got there, and he was belted hard by Nelson Munsey, and the ball went flying. It was about an eight-yard slant pass. So it'll bring in second and ten. Bouchnock goes out. John Shinners comes in with a play. Good defensive play by Lloyd Mumford. Played a number of years with the Miami Dolphins before coming here to the Baltimore Colts. And New England knocked off Miami very handily this afternoon. Bengals trail by one. Have got to get it down into field goal range. They have a second and ten at midfield. Anderson goes back to throw. Looks. Now he's going to be hit and dragged down back at the 39-yard line. And the man who got through and got to him was number 63, Mike Barnes. That may have been the biggest play of the ball game for the Colts. Anderson could not elude him. It's an 11-yard loss, and it'll be third down now and 21. And the Colts have sacked Bengal quarterback. I believe that's about the seventh time this afternoon. Now the Bengals will be going with all kinds of wide receivers. Elliott goes out. They bring in John McDaniel. Myers is in, so are Brooks and Curtis. Only one man in behind. The Colts will rush with the front four and drop everybody else back. Anderson back to throw. Look, 
Now he's going to be hit and dropped. It's a fumble recovered back at the 32-yard line. They had eight men back. There was no room to pass. Anderson was getting dropped the ball. And this crowd up on his feet cheering this Baltimore Colts defensive unit. Joe Irvin was the man who got him, and McAnally will have to boot it. And the Bengals are going to have to make one final stand and get that ball back. They trail by one at 28-27. running it down to 227. Pat McAnally needs a long boot. Gets one away is not particularly good. Howard Stevens takes it at the 29. Comes up to the 30 to 35. Spun down at the 36 yard line by Glenn Cameron. So the Colts will be at their own 37. The Bengals have had this ball just two series of plays here in the fourth quarter and have not been able to move it. Jones has had good protection from his offensive line. It's been the secondary of Baltimore that has kept things pretty well bottled up, and Bengal quarterbacks have had to take a long time to look and see. Bengals are going to have to get this ball back quickly. Colts at their own 38 with the first down. Colts lead it by 128-27. And off goes to Roosevelt Leaks. Around the right side, cuts back, and he gets a couple of yards, and that's about all. Roosevelt Leaks started out wide left, spun in. Coy Bacon turned the play in. And then there were about three other Bengals there to stop it up. And the Colts may be able to let this clock run down to the two-minute warning now before they have to run off another play. Well, the clock has stopped at 228. The Bengals called a timeout to stop it after a gain of one yard. The Colts will have a second and nine. Timeout on the field. Score. Colts 28, Bengals 27. When you get the urge, you know what you've got to do. the urge with the unbamboozling beer. Better than ever, burger. The livelier, fresher beer. Pour a tall, frosty mug and discover that great, zingy burger flavor. Unfool yourself. Brewing Company, Cincinnati, Ohio. Colts will have a second and nine at their own 39-yard line. The Bengals have expended one timeout. Handoff this time to Mitchell. He spins forward for maybe three yards as he tries the right side, gets out to about the 43-yard line. Now the Bengals, you know, Cincinnati calls another timeout, stops it with 224 left. They gain about four in the play. It'll bring up a third down and about five. Clock has stopped with 2.24 left, and the Bengals have just one timeout remaining. The Colts have a slim one-point lead, 28-27, to 27, and in what has been one exciting football game here at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. stop them here and force them to punt. Bengals will have the ball one more time, but they probably will have a long way to go. Colts' defense against the pass has been excellent. Bengal quarterbacks, both Reeves and Anderson, have had difficulty finding receivers and have had to wait long enough, so they've been dropped about seven times. The ball is out at the Colts' 43-yard line. Jim McClare has gone over to check Defensive signals on the far sideline with Chuck Studley and Charlie Winter. Let's see if the Colts will risk putting the ball in the air here in a third and five at their own 43. Burt Jones has converted many a big third down play. They go into a passing formation. A double wing with only McCauley in behind Burt Jones. Jones is going to pass. Rolls out to his right. Now going to run. Still looks upfield. Now he's going to be hit and drop back at about the 41. Maybe got up to the 43. 
And the Bengals have expended their third time out here and have used them all. And the Colts will have to punt, and David Lee goes in to do it. I'm surprised with only 16 seconds the Bengals took a timeout because the clock would have stopped with the exchange of teams as they're going to punt. So now we need a long run back. An odd score out on the coast. The Bears lead San Francisco 7-5. to five. So San Francisco has scored a field goal and a safety. St. Louis leads Green Bay in the second half, 22 to nothing. It's a loss of a couple of yards on the play. They put the ball back at the 41. And when time is back in, David Lee will boot it away. Lee has punted well today. The first half of the game, he kicked just two for 51 yards. He hasn't maintained that average here in the second half, but nevertheless has punted well. As I mentioned before, the Bengals have had the ball for just two series of plays here in this fourth quarter. Well, if wishful thinking would help, a snap right over his head would be the ideal thing right here. Parrish and Shelby are the deep men. The snap is a good one this time. And he gets a good spiral away over toward the far sideline. It goes out of bounds, way down at about the Bengals' 11-yard line. A great boot by Lee. And with two minutes and nine seconds, the Bengals have about 89 yards to go for a touchdown. Any distance inside that for a possible field goal attempt. And the Bengals have just no timeouts remaining. They've used them all. So, of course, they're going to have to throw the ball, use the sidelines, get upfield, call them two plays at a time. A great clutch boot by David Lee. The Bengals have the ball if they say the 12. You can run in a lot of plays in two minutes and nine seconds, but the Bengals don't have the benefits of any timeouts to throw in. Brooks comes out of the near side. Curtis is in the slot. Anderson back to throw. A quick snap to Curtis at the 25, at the 30. Now he's going to reverse himself. At the 30-yard line, still on his feet and gets out to about the 37 or 38. Curtis retreated about five or six yards after he caught that slant, and that brings us up to the two-minute warning. So there's timeout on the field. Score... Colts 28, Bengals 27. Quick Pick is never too far away at all. Quick Pick is located in Henderson on US 60 East, just past the Marathon Service Station. Open 24 hours a day, Quick Pick is the perfect place to shop for any last-minute item you may need. Remember, Quick Pick is never too far away. US 60 East in Henderson. Why bank at the Seabury Deposit Bank? The Seabury Deposit Bank has so many services for you. That's why, like convenient drive-in and walk-up windows, no service charge checking accounts, highest interest rates are liable on savings, individual retirement accounts, bank by mail service, check credit. The Seabury Deposit Bank, Seabury, Kentucky, open 9 to 3 Monday through Thursday, 9 to 2 and 4.30 to 6.30 on Friday, and Saturday 9 to noon. Service, that's the reason the bank and the Seabury Deposit Bank, member FDIC. Turn the ball out at their own 36-yard line. They got 24 yards in the play. Remember, they don't have any timeouts left. There are two minutes to go. Like to work that ball down, of course, to get it in position for a last-second field goal effort. The Colts lead it by one. Dallas beat New Orleans 24-6. to Denver leads the Jets 13-3 to in the second quarter. The Bengals come out. Curtis comes out in the slot. Brooks wide left. They have Chip Myers in there. All kinds of wide men. Back to throw Anderson. Fires out in the flat. Incomplete. was their fifth defensive back, Ray Oldham, that they have in the ball game. Oldham came right up over Curtis's shoulder and knocked that ball away. Bengals have four wide receivers in the game, Curtis, McDaniel, Myers, and Brooks. So the Bengals, at their own 36, have a second and 10. The clock stopped with a minute 55 left. The Bengals will have to use quick ones because they won't be able to get men downfield very likely because the Colts are dropping eight men back into that zone. Anderson back to throw. Looks, now has plenty of time. Still looks, fires up field. is caught at the 43-yard line by Curtis. And he's going to be knocked down at the Bengals' 44. Gained about eight in the play, and that will bring up a third and two. Let's pause 15 seconds for station identification. This is the Cincinnati Bengals football network. 
You're listening to Cincinnati Bengals football right here on Radio 86. WSON Henderson, your number one spot for sports. Henderson was forced for the run with the ball and was knocked out at the 46-yard line. He may have made the first down, but the clock is running. The Colts were slow getting back on the play before this one, and the officials stopped the clock while they got back. Now it will stop the clock as they may be forced to measure. Let's see. Now they're going to say... And it is the third down, but there is about one to go. But now they're bringing in the chains to measure. So now it brings up fourth down and about a yard to go at the 43. The ball is at the Bengals 46. Crumpy and Coslett, two tight ends go back, and the official fell down or may have been knocked down as the Bengals came up to the line of scrimmage. I think John Chinners just ran over him as he had his microphone out there. They're spotting the ball very carefully. The Bengals, of course, have to pick up the first down. It's fourth and one. They're spotting the ball and spotting it exactly. The Bengals are in their own territory at their own 46. They've got to make the first down. Let's see if they want to expend a little time here in a running play. Let's see what they're going to do. The Colts are jammed in there shoulder high. Anderson keeps the ball. I don't know if he made it or not. Timeout is called. The Colts have stopped him, I believe, and have taken over the ball. They're signaling that. Oh, well, we haven't had a measurement yet. The clock is stopped with a minute 13. The Colts have about 20 men out on the field. They're going to bring in the chains to measure. There's so many Colts around, we can't see the ball. a little yards on a keeper play. The Bengals are uh, inches. So the Bengals are going to have to go for the ball. They don't have any timeouts remaining. I don't really think the Bengals used their timeouts too wisely. They stopped the clock once with 2.16 to go. They only would have run off 16 seconds and would have been down to the two-minute warning. Jones can just flop on the ball a couple of times, and that's all it'll take. He goes down one. The Bengals are unable to stop the clock. Well, the Colts appear to be winners by a point here at 28-27. Bengals move the ball out from their own 12, and then were unable to make a first down. When they had a third and two and fourth and about one, unable to make, and the Colts can just run off the clock. dirty white Bengal jerseys on that defensive unit. Again, Jones just goes down to the ground. It'll bring up a third down, and they can just about let the clock run right down to the bare nub. Both raising their hands in victory gestures over on the sideline. 17 down to 16 to 15, and the Colts are going to win it by one point here. And the Bengals are sitting here hopeless are helpless and unable to do anything about it. Down to five seconds. The two teams are walking off the field and the Colts have won it here by one point. Our spotters today have been Gene Shields and John Lloyd. Technical director was Paul Eichholz. And the executive producer is Jim Hampton. This is Phil Sampson. Once again, our final score here at Baltimore's Memorial Stadium was the Colts 28 and the Bengals 27. This is the Cincinnati Bengals Football Network.